and welcome everyone uh, to our consultation webinar. Uh, so I'm just waiting for, for some reason it won't, my co-host Heather, it won't allow her on. It's saying another meeting in progress. So we will just um, wait for her to pop on so I can make her a co-host. Uh, we are going to be acting it out again today like the open house <laughs> uh, webinar. Uh, for some reason, I felt much more confident with the open house webinar because uh, today, like, we're, I mean, I guess the open house webinar, we were acting as well, but today we're really going to be acting as uh, patients uh, coming in and needing consultations on different things. So bear with us. <laughs> Hopefully we'll do a good job. Um, additionally, as we, um, we're going to kind of set up the scenario of um, the person coming in and what they're wanting to get done. And if you guys, after, you know, Heather or I answer as the person who is doing the consultation, if you guys have any insight that you would like to add in of what maybe you would have said or maybe something you would have done possibly different in the consultation that could help everybody else out on the webinar, uh, you're more than welcome to chime in, um, you know, because obviously this is for all of us to learn. And um, I know a lot of you guys have great ideas um, that, that you could share with others. So you're more than welcome to unmute yourselves or write in the chat, whichever you feel most comfortable with. Um, okay, so let me just check on Heather really quick. Um, hmm. Still not letting her on. So bear with me. I'm just going to send a message really quick. Uh, to our technical team. Mute, you see. Okay, I just wrote a message to the technical team, so hopefully they'll be able to figure that out. Um, oh, I see Donna, you're on. I don't know why it's doing that to her. Um, so Donna, if you could, maybe she tried the link from uh, the group uh, message you sent. So maybe you could text her the link that you sent to all the participants that are on now. Um, that could be helpful. Um, let's see. All right. Um, I'll just keep chatting until they get it all figured out. <laughs> Um, I see that I have two chat, uh, two messages in the chat. Hello. Hi, Giovanna. Hi, Cynthia. Good morning to you guys. Thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we'll be able to get started soon. Uh, not working for me either. Uh oh. Let's see. So sorry, you guys. Um, I figured if I just get this fixed really quick, then we can get on with the, the full show here. So let me try this. Um, Okay, so some people were able to get in and then others were not. Um, okay, well, we'll just keep chatting and they'll kind of figure it out. I'll have them message her directly to try to get that fixed. Um, okay, so what I'll talk about before we go into the acting portion, <laughs> um, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, Heather will join us. So, you know, I, I, we've had two practice development sites that you were most likely on, I'm, I'm guessing. 
and we discuss the importance of consultation. And my two big things that I really focus on when speaking on a consultation is, or, you know, doing consultations is coming at them from, um, you know, because a lot of times consultations are hard for people. But if you think of these two things, I think it will be a big benefit and, and really helpful to you guys. One is coming at it from a place of passion. And I feel like that's probably easy for everybody that's on here because you already have so much passion for the industry, right? That's why you chose it. That's why you're in it because you have passion for it. And then passion for the technology, knowing that it works. And I think that if you're a brand new viewer, a customer, and you really haven't been able to get your hands on it very much, um, I highly recommend just practice, 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 practice with your friends, practice with your family members. Um, because when you practice and you start to see those results and you start to see that your friends and family members are, are happy or even your, your patients, if you are practicing on them, seeing how happy they are, will automatically give you passion for it. And that's how I gained really, uh, I always had passion for the industry, you know, that's, that's why I'm in it. But when I started really seeing the results myself on doing treatments on friends, family members, or treatments being done on, on myself, is when I really gained so much passion uh, for these technologies. So if you're in a consultation and you come from a place of passion, they already just want it because, you know, you're, you're shining that through of how well it works and, and how much you can transform them. Secondly, would be coming from a place of um, kind of teaching an educational aspect to it. A lot of people that are coming into you in a consultation really don't know what these technologies truly do. Now, I know there's a day and age now where it's social media and Google, so a lot of people may come in already knowing a lot, but they don't know as much as you, and most likely they don't know skin as well as you. So making sure to educate them on what's really happening in the skin. Um, what is our skin made up of? You know, they they may not know that there's fat and then there's collagen layers and then there's a layer with, with the melanocytes that produce our pigment that protect us from the sun and so on and so forth. Vascular in our skin and how that plays a big role in, in results and um, the health of skin. They additionally may, may think that one technology will fix it all when we know that that's not the case. It's, it, it, that's when you're coming at it from a combination aspect to really give them the best results if they're needing that combination treatment, which a lot of times they do. So being able to educate them on, on their own skin. And I found that when I started educating my own friends and family members is when they're more, um, they're, they're constantly now asking me more questions and what can I do and when can I come see you and, um, you know, I don't know, wh where do you recommend for me to go when I'm traveling? Because they're, they're so educated on their skin and they know how important it is that they are wanting to continue with the cycle of keeping their skin at a really high integrity. So I think when you think of those two things going into a consultation, the teaching aspect, education, and passion, when you have those two, when you're brand new at doing consultations, it's most likely gonna become very, very easy for you guys. Now, I know in the practice development Skype, we also talked about additional things that you may have to overcome in a consultation, like they're scared of the pain of it. Um, they are feeling guilty of spending money on themselves. Their husband won't let them spend money on themselves. You know, there's there's a lot of roadblocks that, that you may need to overcome with, with selling them treatments. So, that's why we developed scenarios today and we developed roadblocks that you may hit and how we would talk to a patient to overcome those roadblocks. So that being said, let me check on Heather. I'm here. Oh, stop it. <laughs> we got the right link. I'm good. Oh, amazing. Okay. So let me just make you a co-host. I'm actually at my spa too, and um, I'm in my little consultation area. So you I, are? Yeah, oh, I figured. 
Right. <laughs> Look a little more realistic. Absolutely. Okay, so let me make you a co-host. Yes. And then let me unpin myself because last time I think that's what I did and that's why I didn't record you is because I pinned myself in the beginning um, accidentally. So let me unpin video. Perfect. Okay, so you look beautiful. Well, so do you. Oh, oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I did a spray tan, a, a oh, bake and bake. I almost did that this morning and I'm like, meh. I feel like a new woman. <laughs> yeah, right? It does. Those little things that help. Little. Yeah. A little bit big to us. Okay, so, you know, I'm sure you've been on for a few minutes. So I was just kind of discussing, like, how I would come at a consultation. Um, and I always talk about coming at it from a place of passion, which most of us already have, because that's why we're in the industry, mm -hmm. um, because we have so much passion, but also coming at it from a place of education and making sure they under really understand what's going on and, and how their skin is, is made up. So when they really understand these things, then they understand why these treatments are so important, not just doing one package and forgetting it, you know, mm -hmm. making sure that it becomes a lifestyle for them to, to really hold those results that, that you gave or someone that's younger that's just wanting to get a jump start. Anything that you want to add in, like in a consultation, kind of your thought process, maybe two or three things that you're thinking of that you want to share before we start the acting portion? Sure. Um, I would say that another thing that's really important um, is confidence, confidence in the treatments, um, confidence in, um, in yourself, uh, describing the treatments. I think that that's the biggest thing. I think that I'll, we all understand what we're doing in the skin, but it's really hard to relay that to a client. Um, that's that's it's quite the art and it's not as hard as as you think if you do come at it like you said with passion and with education that being said even if you understand it and you're passionate about it if you can't articulate the right words it can get you into kind of a bind um or you could be you know fumbling over your words um so i would say that making sure that you're really ready for that consultation by doing a little bit of your homework before the consultation. Make sure you're super confident in not only that the treatments work, so make sure that you're doing the treatments in your office, on yourself, on your friends, on your family members. You know, make sure you really do believe in these because it's really hard to, to sell something that you don't believe in. Um, this is why we can talk about it so well, because we've been doing this for so long and have seen so many different amazing results mm -hmm. and that we're just bombarded with that. That's all we get. But when you're a brand new operator, you may not have had all of that, um, all of that positivity that we've gotten. So you may not truly, truly believe in all of the technology. So if there's something that you're having a hard time with, absolutely go do it, do some treatments on it. Like do, you know, do that practice, um, contact us, you want some, or, or go on our, our portal, get some really good before and after pictures. These are real before and after pictures. Get yourself psyched up um, mm -hmm. and really believe in it because then it will just relay yeah. out to the client. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but just do some, do some um, just basic, you know, go through your workbook, um, go through your notes, all these, um, all these webinars that we all these recorded. webinars. Yeah. Watch one. Absolutely. Um, just so that you're really familiar with what is really happening in the skin and you're not fumbling over your words, but you're right. Like in the beginning and, and I actually, right before you got on, that's what I was talking about is getting into the office. If you're a brand new operator, practicing on your friends and your family and yourself, because mm -hmm. even though I have passion for the industry, I probably didn't gain that crazy confidence of being able to teach it, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. that's a hard part. Um, but then talking to, like when we go to open houses and just talking to the clients, I probably wasn't as good, you know, the first few months being with Viora. But then when treatment and when uh, people started doing treatments to me, when I started doing a lot of treatments to people and seeing how excited they were and seeing how their self-confidence was going up, that's when like you said, it kind of just oozes out of you and probably just will sell the, you'll sell the treatments accidentally, not even meaning to. Right. Like, wow, well, I didn't, even, I, didn't even if you, I mean, even if you do believe in the treatments and you have the passion and you have the lingo and you go about a console like this, oh, yeah. you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and yeah. explaining everything and you do have to 
act a little bit during a consult, even if you're not feeling it, you know, everyone doesn't have a hundred percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone's days aren't a hundred percent every single day, but you got to fake it till you make it during a consult. They want to feel that warmth. They want to feel the excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, and this happens a lot too. So say you're an operator that's been doing this forever, right? So you've been doing this for years, you know, it works. You can lose that energy. Yep. So for us, when we go into train an account, it's like that brand new energy every time. So it like, it, it you brings us, this- you turn it on. And, and yeah. that's the thing with like consultations too. You just have to turn it. Even if you're exhausted, there's this energy that comes out of you when you turn it on. Yes, absolutely. And it's not, you're not faking it because it's not, you're not lying. You're just pulling it from inside you remembering and, and getting in, in relaying it to, to the client. Yep. Um, because they're spending their hard earned money yep. and they want to know that this is an exciting thing. I always, uh, end a consult with, I'm so excited for you. Yeah. Cause it, it's, it, I am, first yeah. of all, I am yeah. really excited for them. Um, but then they're leaving, like, I'm excited for me too. You yeah. know? Right, right, right. Um, like I, I'm doing it. Something that I've probably been wanting to do for a long time too. A and long I think time. you got to think about that too. And, and you just reminded me of something, you know, like if you go into a consultation, like, uh, cause I mean, we have had times where we've had to speak in front of big crowds and maybe we didn't sleep well. Our plane was delayed. We got in at 2am. We're exhausted. But then after we get done speaking in front of the group, they say, wow, you guys did a great job or wow, you guys are inspiring or whatever. We're like, really? But it, you know, we're digging down deep to turn it on. So yeah. you're right. Like going into a consultation, if you're tired that day, you just got to like, like you said, power through, um, power through. Right, power through. Yeah. but additionally, I think too, is, um, the person doing the consultation, if it's you making sure that you're not, a, you're not thinking like, Ooh, $2,000, like this is is a lot for me so I think it's gonna be a lot for them and Mm -hmm. you do not know some of these people have waited years to do something like this and they've saved and they're ready so you know even though that may seem like a lot to you and and that usually comes from maybe not the owner of the spa maybe not the doctor of the spa but like a new esthetician, a new operator, a new nurse, whatever it may be of um you know maybe they're not making that kind of money quite yet they will in the future um, but you know, making sure that it's not like a cringeworthy moment when it comes to talking about pricing. Never. Well, I think this, I think this is what happens actually too, uh, along with that. I think that say I don't have a, a beard, like I don't have chin hair, right? So I can't even think about what it's like to have chin hair. Right. and have to shave your face every day right. or wax or do all these things, right? So if I don't have skin laxity, I'm not going to put the value into into spending that. But if I do have skin laxity, yeah. that's yeah, all yeah, I yeah. think about. You know, right. when I look in the mirror, that's all I see. So you you kind of have to put yourself in, like have that empathetic, yep. um, put yourself in, them, in their shoes, mm-hmm. listen to their concerns, listen to their their hurts almost and Mm -hmm. try to fix them Mm -hmm. um and take yourself out of it you're not you're no longer really a person you're just a problem solver trying to fix their their problems yep yeah so i mean i think that that's huge i think that um that i i struggled with that in the beginning because i started off as an esthetician when i was 19. yeah exactly we're living you, at you home you don't have any money right right yeah, right yeah. With like none and of then like money. in my first apartment that I, it was like a three like three hundred dollars a month and i was yeah. like it's oh locked. god i have to pay rent this month you know yeah 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 um that's how i started off as an esthetician so selling a huge package also hair removal at that time i'm gonna age myself a lot um hair removal at that time like a full back was like fifteen hundred dollars a treatment yeah. Yep. So it was harder for me to sell at that point. Um, and one time, um, a doctor that I was working with said, get yourself out of their wallet and out of their pocketbook, get your mind out of there stop relating their, your their situation to your situation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Because you are totally separate people. Right. You know, it's um, so true. I, I, I have a bit of a, benefit there in terms of, um, I started Botox when I was really young. 
So I remember I didn't have a lot of money then, and it was my early 20s. So it wasn't as young as you. Like 19, I probably would have been like, yeah, sorry, it's $1,500. Uh, but I was still young. I was probably like 25 when I started Botox. And I got to the point of, you know, I wasn't making a lot of money. And I got to the point of it's, it's going to be groceries or it's going to be my Botox. And sure enough, I just hardly ate that week and did my Botox. Helped out because you're a model, right? So it helps both. I was modeling at the time. So I was like, (laughs) I have to do it. And I'll (laughs) be a pound. Um, So that that was a benefit. But, you know, in my mind, starting young. And so I I wanted to talk about that too is when people come in in their 20s, because that's a big thing now, is people are starting younger. So even if they're a young girl that comes in who's 28, who wants to start doing something for their skin now, don't assume that she she can't pay for it because she'll probably do everything she can to make sure she can pay for it. Plus, she may have a lot of money. You never know. And she might not have the expenses that we have as, exactly. as older as people. You know? <laughs> as we don't, we don't, she may not have children. She may not have a mortgage. Right, right. She may, you know, still be living at home. Like, she right. could have a completely, um, like a budget that she can just spend her entire paycheck exactly. on whatever she wants. Yeah, exactly. So it actually is not, that's not someone that you, you're going to pin down, out. down as like someone that yep. has no money. Right. Because she could have a decent job yep. and no expenses. Yeah, you have no so. idea. So that that's our point really is, um, you know, you just have no idea. And even if they come in, dressed a certain way or whatever. You just never ever, assume that everybody can afford everything and wants yeah. everything Everyone until they say no. Unlimited funds. And then, right, exactly. Then they, I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to overwhelm people either. Right. Um, right, I right, think right. that's huge too. Um, that, you know, some people want to get as much out of you as possible during that consultation. So they want to get every single bit of information of everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, those are the consults you leave and you're like, oh my gosh, I yeah. explained everything. I'm so tired. But you you want to focus them, refocus them to why they came in in the, in the beginning. They yeah. may purchase everything on that day. So you don't want to rule that out, but you also don't want to overwhelm them with a $20,000, you know, bill that day. Right. Right. Whereas they'll go, Oh, uh, I, I can't afford this stuff. I, I, I and, and they run out and they run. So yeah. I, I, I do like to explain things. Um, but I like to re- keep refocusing them to that first thing that they came in for. Yep. Yeah. Um, that's important because they do, people do get overwhelmed. They kind of do it to themselves because they ask all these questions, but then they're like, oh gosh, because all of this stuff is amazing. We, Yeah, it's fascinating too when you start learning. Yeah, of course. So, you know, even if you only have a little laxity, you're like, oh, that's cool that I could even do that. Right, right. I do like to refocus them down and then let them decide if they want to do more than that. What about if I do this? You know, do do I get a discount? Yes, absolutely. Let's yeah. add that in. Yeah. So slowly adding things in is is better than just giving them the whole everything that they could possibly be interested in all at yeah. once. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a I'll good. That's that really good advice. Care too. I'll um, especially because our, we we carry more high end lines, so they're a little more expensive. And so um, I like to start them on two or three products only, and not a full regimen. And mm-hmm. I like to say, let's start here. Now let's start here and reconvene. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure that you have no issues with these three products mm-hmm. and then let's go from there. Mm-hmm. They respect you because they don't think you're just trying to sell them everything. Sell everything. Mm-hmm. These are the most, the three things that I really would love to put you on. Yes. Now say they have, you know, they're, they're just the skincare junkie and they're like, I want everything. Yeah. They'll buy it that day. Yeah. 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 You're not going to stop them. Try to focus them down to those first three things. Yeah. So that they are, they can actually try them first of all. Yeah, yeah. make sure they like them too. Things working right, um, but also to not overwhelm them with a fifteen hundred dollar product. Right, right. However, they may buy that because the next time they come in for a treatment, or you could have them come in for a consult, or they'll they'll contact you, or I actually will contact them and say, "How do you like those three products?" Mm-hmm. And then that and that enters into a whole new thing yeah i was thinking about a toner i was thinking about adding in this or do you have a night serum now they feel like they 
haven't purchased anything because they've right. already paid that bill. Right, right, right. And right. they'll purchase another three products. Yeah. So it's it's a way to kind of, I mean, feel out your person because if they're like saying, listen, I want all of it. Give me everything. I want to go. I, I'm going uh, to my high school reunion and I need yeah. everything, no matter. You'll know. You'll yeah. know when that's that person. Right. And sell them everything, of course, right? Yeah. yeah. Do as much as you can for them. But if it's somebody that's just coming in to talk about certain things, just refocus them. Yes. Yeah. No, that's really good advice. What about, um, cause there'll, there will be some people that come in and they just want to talk about money first before you even have time to like go through anything. How do you refocus them on that? I tend to, I tend to talk about the prices right off the bat with them if they ask. Okay. Yeah. 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 This, so only if they ask. So, um, this is why you don't want to, it doesn't want to, you don't want it to feel like you're being salesy. It's sneaky. So just sneaky, just be real, you know? So here are the prices. Now let's talk about what you're getting with that. Yeah. 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 And, you know, get right into that. Um, because is, is in an ideal world, right. We'll be able to explain everything, get them really excited and then say, it's only this. And then, you know, but should you give them those first prices, explain it all, right? And then at the end, maybe you say, but we are having a special this month or, yeah. you know, then you'll drop the, the discount. So now mm-hmm. they're excited about it. They, they see the price here. Yeah. Excited about it. And then it goes, even you're going to give them a discount. So yeah. it's even better. Yeah, so, yeah. um, and you don't have to give a ton, um, for consultations. When someone comes in, I give them $50 off a treatment or 10% off their first package. If they purchase during that consultation. Nice. And I don't, I drop that at the end. You know, I don't tell them that right from the beginning. I drop right. that right at the end when I'm trying to, to close the sale. Um, it's only for their first one, you know, it's not forever, but it just kind of brings them in and, and locks them into, to purchase that day. Yeah. Um, that's just what I do. You don't have to do that. You can give them less, you could give them more, you could give them a free consultation if you charge for consultation. Yeah. Yeah. There's so, so many things, but that's when you would gift, that like down. a free mini serum or yeah, there's so many things you Something. can do. Right. Right. Um, so you guys, I, I'm really, really leaning on Heather on this consultation because you guys know I don't own a med spa. I don't own an office. So I'm coming at it from from the experience that I have over the years, but I just want to say I'm leaning on her. I'm wanting to to learn everything I can from her because she does have a successful med spa and and she's built it from the ground up and and has made it a success so that being said i would also lean on on her during this webinar ask any questions that you guys have i mean both of us um it, yeah. you know, it, it will both help you but um i just urge you know any questions you guys have on consultations if you feel like maybe you don't do them and you need to start uh, maybe you feel like you don't do them well maybe you're not sure how to train your staff on them Take this time, ask questions. Uh, we're going to get acting here in just a second. So I'm just going to open it up to you guys. Any questions that you have right now for us? You can unmute, you can type in. I also want to just add that I was so insecure about doing consultations. That was, it, it's one of my favorite things to do because I love to talk about this stuff and I love to teach and I love the energy that, you know, you even get back from somebody when you can solve their problems. So I love consultations now, but I would say that it was my biggest weakness yeah, when I first started out. So don't, don't fear that like, this is just not for you and you're just never going to be good at this. It takes time, it takes it's practice. practice. It takes talking, you know, in front of the mirror. If you have to, it takes writing down um, specific phrases that you like on on flashcards. I'm a flashcard girl. That's, you know, that's how I even started clinical training is tons and tons of flashcards with this information about modes and about um, hey, all keep, of the technology behind keep it. Keep talking. Sorry, I forgot to grab a water and I know that I'll need one. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So don't, don't, if you are a little bit insecure about doing consultations, please don't think that that is just, it's just not in your cards that you're just not going to be good at them. Um, I promise you with time, um, you can get really, really good at them. Um, 
And I, like I said, I enjoy them. I actually miss them. Uh, I've been doing virtual consultations with people and it's so not the same just being in there and meeting new people and talking to them. Um, so I, I miss doing them and I would never, ever in a million years guess that I would ever say that probably 10 years ago, even seven years ago. So. And by the way, if you guys have any questions right now, this is the perfect time to ask while Heather's just chatting about this. Finn said, never assume, absolutely never assume anything about anyone because it will be the person that comes in and looks like they don't have a dollar to their name that will be your best client and spend a ton of money. Um, and then the person that comes in with a Louis Vuitton and a diamond as big as their head uh, may not may not purchase a, a ton from you. So I agree with you, never ever assume um, that someone is going to purchase or not purchase. Well, yeah, they can't purchase because their diamond was as big as their head. They don't have, <laughs> any, more, they don't have any more money. <laughs> oh my God, my backdrop just fell on top of me, hold on. Oh no, Woo! oh my God. <laughs> Keep talking. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about consultations or even if you want to just write in or uh, unmute yourself um, and talk uh, and just let us know what struggles you've had in the past in regards to, um, to consultations. That would help us kind of make sure that we cover everything. That was almost a disaster. All right, we got somebody in the chat here. Um, and don't take it personal if the sale doesn't happen the first time. Absolutely. Um, and, and I like how you said if it doesn't happen the first time because usually they're, you know, usually they'll come back. You know, they, especially if you're, you are, um, you know, treating them well during the consultation, you're greeting them as you should, you're not ignoring them, you're taking your time, you know, they like you, maybe they're just not ready to purchase right then, but maybe next month they're back. So I like how you said the first time. Mm -hmm. Be organized too with your consultations. Make sure you're running reports of consults that you've seen that have not purchased. So monthly, we'll run a report and see who's purchased, who hasn't, who hasn't purchased, who has purchased, uh, and we'll reach out to them. Because the, I can't tell you how many times I've looked and saw somebody that's interested in hair removal that didn't purchase that day, and I'm like, oh, we're doing a special right now. Let me reach out to her. So I personally, we'll reach out to her, send a quick email, and guess what happens? They say, oh my gosh, great. I didn't know you were doing a consult. I mean, a, um, a special right now. Um, also, get their information. So important. Get all of their information when they're there for their consultation. Add them to your email list. Even um, social media. Get their social media. media. Yeah, so you can start following them, and, and yeah. you can – uh, participate with them on social media, like like the things that they're posting. They'll, they may like the things you're posting, and then they can see the specials that you're running. Yes, you're building that professional relationship. That's that's what we focus on when we're talking um, about um, practice development. Uh, consult, when we were talking on the practice development uh, webinar, it's so important. You're yeah. building a, a friendship, a relationship with this person, and they're going to be your professional friend for a long, hopefully long for time. Life. Hopefully for yeah. life. Hopefully for life, right? Yeah. Um, they liked that idea about the report. It's a good good idea. Yeah, that's good. Um, also, um, so not everybody purchases the first time. Um, not everybody, you know, necessarily has, has money at that one time. Maybe, maybe that seemed like way too much at the time. However, their husband got a raise. Mm-hmm they got a raise, they got their stimulus check, <laughs> you know? There's the, pan, the pandemic is starting to ease up and they right. got the job back. Exactly, so uh, there's, where you were at, where that client was at during that consultation is not where they're always going to be at. Yeah. Um, maybe their, their son or daughter graduated college and now they have the money that was being spent on that for themselves and a reason to do something you know the graduation in general they're going to their graduation you know events yes. come up yes yes and that's that's the other thing too is that you know if you're living your day-to-day -day, going to work doing your thing 
you know, you may not be that worried about a specific line or, um, or a dark spot or whatever, um, but then all of a sudden you have a class reunion coming up or, you know, you have your daughter's wedding coming up. All of a sudden, it's now worth it. Yeah. That, that money is worth spending. So keep reaching out to people. Um, make sure they're on that, that list. Um, I know that uh, Constant Contact is, is um, an emailing, um, uh, is a website that allows you to create emails. Uh, and I, I use it uh, monthly. And there's others out there. You don't have to use this one. But what I like about Constant Contact is it actually pins different things that the person is actually looking at from on your um, on your monthly specials. So whatever they go to your website for, it actually puts them into a group. And then you can send out emails to that group alone. So say you're just wanting to run a body hair. contouring special yeah. or hair. Yeah. So you just want to uh, run a hair removal special for these specific people. You can send just an email to the people that have actually looked at your website. So there's a Great. lot of technology that you can use to really help you out in this. What's um, the name of that? With all of the touches. That one is constant contact, but I'm, there's, there's a bunch out there. Um, that do work and they probably all have similar features. I'm sending that to everyone in the group chat if you guys want to look into that. Good one. And if you guys have any other um, other suggestions, uh, that's suggestions. what we're, yeah, we are all here to just yeah. learn from one another. So, yeah, anything you guys want to do. All right, you want to go into acting? Sure. <laughs> we'll see how this goes for me. <laughs> We're going to be great. The open house, I felt pretty... <laughs> pretty confident with but you're yeah. uh you're much at least you're a much better actress than me so you've got that <laughs> good I'll act like the patient every time then. <laughs> okay so um so I'll I'll be the patient first Heather okay for this first one um okay so, and actually, before I say action, let me just see the chat. Like <laughs> Loved the open house. Oh, good. Yay. Hopefully, you'll love this one, too. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. So, and how many treatments can you do in one setting? Ooh, well, I mean, you can do a lot in one setting. You know, it's it, the, you can do, you know, full body hair removal if they can withstand laying there that long and you know are totally comfortable with the with the sensation of it um you can do hair removal and skin tightening on on top of one another you can do radio frequency and ipl and hair you know hair removal and microneedling and prp all in one setting um we talked a lot about that on the past webinars like the combination the only thing you need to be really concerned with is doing too much in one day is going to be um, anything that's dealing with really contouring cellulite, just because we're really, really, really working with lymphatics. And there's gonna be two problems. One, we can just overwork the lymphatics so they can't just properly do their job. Um, additionally, it's, it's kind of like when you get a deep tissue massage, what's the first thing that they hand you? A glass of water. Why? Because you can become nauseous, you can become lightheaded, you just don't feel all that well when they're really working with the lymph lymphatic system a lot, unless you, you know, really hydrate after. So I would not overdo your contouring um, or cellulite. I would stick to three areas. And what I mean by that is like the abdomen and the two back of the legs, uh, both legs for cellulite, um, or the front of the leg cellulite and back of the leg cellulite, and then call it a day and have them come back then a couple days later for their abdomen and maybe their submental. But other than that, I mean, if, if they can truly lay there for a while for, for full body hair removal, and for example, and you can stay in that room for a long time for full body hair removal, which a lot of times that's just hard for operators. You know, you need a break. Um, there really isn't a, a huge like limit on what, what you'll, what you're able to do. It's just kind of, you know, being realistic with, with, um, with yourself and them. And additionally too, when you're doing like hair removal and IPL, there's lingering heat after. So if they have lingering heat everywhere, then it's kind of, it goes from, oh, this is just mild heat on my back to, my God, my whole body is mild heat. And maybe they're uncomfortable with that too. So um, 
you know, you just have to kind of think about that. But you can layer a lot of treatments like on a face. You can really layer. And actually, I'll be I'll be discussing that in just a minute of um, when when Heather acts like the patient and then I'm the person doing the consultation talking about layering treatments all in the same day, uh, coming at it from more of an educational aspect. Uh, I hope that helps. Okay, and action. <laughs> take one, <laughs> maybe take 20 <laughs> by the time we get done. Okay, so hi. <laughs> my name is Susan and I'm a 35 year old mom of three so I just had my last baby uh two years ago so I'm I'm done breastfeeding and I've been waiting to get treatments done once I was done breastfeeding but since I've had three kids I have just my abdomen just doesn't look same. Uh, it's not just loose skin. I do have laxity. I have like loose skin hanging there, but I also have um, just that, I don't know, stubborn fat that won't go away too with having the baby. I don't know if that's hormones or what it is, but I just can't get rid of it. Um, and, uh, you know, I also kind of feel I don't know. I guess I kind of feel guilty. Like I'm a mom of three. Like, should I even be doing this? But it definitely bothers me. And summer's coming up. And we always go to the lake and I, you know, I just don't really feel comfortable, but should I be doing it on myself? So I just wanted to see if you had anything to offer and if I should do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I'm going to actually recommend for you is something called a V-form treatment. So we can actually, with radio frequency, we can tighten the skin, we can shrink up fat cells, um, and we can give a much more smooth appearance to the tissue. Um, the abdomen, especially after a baby, we get a lot of laxity because it's blown up and then shrunk back down, um, and you lose the weight pretty fast. Um, so this, so this is this is definitely a common issue, uh, and not everybody wants to go and get a, a surgical procedure. So we actually have a really great uh, alternative for you um, that is radio frequency with vacuum suction. So um, because you have both, you have a little. I'm going to pretend like I'm like touching everything and. Okay. Side note. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so because you have a little bit of both here. I see a little bit of, of volume, I can some pinchable volume fat, um, also some laxity. So I'm feeling that your skin is a little bit loose. I'm gonna recommend a protocol or a series including both treatments. So we can do both. Um, both treatments actually help both things. However, one is gonna focus more on laxity, the other's gonna focus more on the volume. So we're gonna start with the volume. I'm gonna recommend six treatments to really shrink up the adipocytes, um, to shrink up the fat cells. The, the fatty acids, the triglycerides, are gonna come out of the fat cell and it's gonna be a smaller, healthier fat cell. We're not killing the fat cell, we're shrinking it. We're making it more healthy and do what it's supposed to do and what it would, was doing prior to, uh, to being pregnant and having um, this whole issue happen. Uh, and I'm also gonna recommend six treatments for skin tightening. Um, like I said, you're gonna get a little bit of tightening when we're reducing the fat, the volume, but you're gonna get really nice tightening with the refit protocol. Um, so six treatments there I feel like would be really, really beneficial for you. Um, they're the same price, which is nice, so we can interchange them. So say after four treatments of volume, we're ready to roll and we wanna do some refit treatments on you at that point. Um, say you're losing weight on your own, that's going to benefit too, the whole area. You don't have to lose weight. Um, the only thing that we really recommend you do is drink lots and lots of water. So water is so important when doing these treatments. Hydrated cells, radio frequency is attractive. <laughs> this is really what they do. They drink water every time you say that. So, <laughs> so hydrated cells respond so much better to the radio frequency. It's attracted to the radio frequency. Um, the ra I'm sorry, the radio frequency is more attracted to those hydrated cells than unhydrated cells. So you're gonna get a better result should you drink water. 
like I said, you don't have to lose weight, um, but if you're dieting and you're exercising and you're doing this as the third option, you're going to get the ultimate results out of it. I like to think of it as like a third, um, third, something in your corner, you know, to, to help you to make this area look a little bit better um, and do things that just diet and exercise alone cannot do. Um, we, what else did you say? I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Actually, I'll just talk back then. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, and I was just about to meet somebody. Um, okay. So I, that's exciting because I did not want to have surgery at all. And with being a mom of three, I don't have time for that either. Right. No so doubt. yeah, I just, uh, obviously I have to be on my feet. So with that being said, being a mom of three and super busy, how often and how long would I be in the office for these treatments? Kind so of- fast. These are such fast treatments. You can pop in and out in 30 minutes um, oh. for this area. It, it, they're so fast. They're, um, they're not uncomfortable at all. A lot of times people think it feels like a warm massage. I actually really enjoy getting a treatment feels warm. It feels great. It looks great right after. Um, we're going to be taking your pictures. We're going to be um, doing some um, to weigh, weighing you every time you come in. So add those two things to the treatment, but the actual treatment itself only takes about 20 minutes. Um, so you're in and out in a half an hour. So for a busy mom, for a busy person, this is, this is not uh, a huge time constraint. You're going to be coming in every week for the first six treatments. Okay. Or the while we're doing uh, body contouring, okay. as soon as we switch to to the refit treatment and start to tighten up that skin, we are going to do every other week. So it's even less of a time oh, constraint. Okay. There's no downtime. There's no re- irritation, redness that's going to linger more than 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. Um, nobody would even know that you're doing the treatments, except that you're just looking better and better. So. Um, I'm excited to to really like get rid of that fat. Will I see any type of tightening with that one or will I just kind of have to wait to see tightening at the end? You may see a little bit. Um, you may. Um, Two thirds of that energy and focus is on shrinking the fat cell. One third is tightening. So you're never going to see more laxity oh, while we're doing the contouring treatment. Yeah. Um, however, it's not specifically for that. So you're yeah. going to see a little bit. Some people see even more than others. Um, what, what is nice though is when, when there's volume there, it kind of pulls the skin down. It, 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 um, it pulls that gravity, uh, mm-hmm. is going to make the laxity look a little bit worse. Mm-hmm. So when you do reduce that volume, it can look better already without doing the refit treatments. However, that skin and the integrity of the skin is still going to need some work mm-hmm. after doing this just mm-hmm. because of, you know, having three kids and having it stretch all this time. So we want to bring that back. We want to rejuvenate. We want a um, new collagen and elastin to form in the area so that you can have a tighter abdomen um, and you won't have that laxity. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm still feeling kind of guilty. So just money wise then, um, with needing the two, how does that like, is it two separate packages that I need to buy? How does that work? So the way that we do it, do this, um, because they're the same price is that if you purchase all 12 treatments at this time, um, at right from the get go, you get a discount the more that you purchase, the more treatments that you purchase. So one treatment is $249. Uh, if you purchase three, it's a little bit less. It's about 5% of a discount. If you're going to purchase six treatments, it's going to be a 10% discount. Um, when you purchase 10 treatments, you get a 15% discount on the full amount. Okay. So you're getting 15% off each treatment. Um, a lot of times people are nervous. They're say, they say, how many treatment, how do you know how exactly how many treatments it's going to be? And I'm just kind of giving you a roundabout number. Um, mm-hmm. However, should you be completely finished in 10 treatments, you're going to need some maintenance treatments. So you'd have two treatments to do every three months just to kind of maintain that collagen and elastin um, production and give you that nice look. Okay. Okay. So they're not wasted. No. Could I just buy one and see? 
You can, you can, absolutely. We, all, we allow you to do that. Um, it'd be $249 per treatment, so you're going to spend a little bit more doing it that way. Um, instead, what I like pe to have people do is I'll pull them into the room, which we can do right after, uh, and let you feel it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you may feel like, is this going to hurt? Is this going to be red? Is this? So I can actually pulse it on your stomach, let you feel it. Um, I can show you some before and after pictures just so that you don't waste that money on that initial treatment. Mm -hmm. Again, though, if that's what you would like to do, you can just know it's always recommended to be, that it's done in a series. Mm -hmm. um, and you're not going to see, you know, night and day difference with that one treatment. You may see some. We're going to take a before, right before, and a right after. And nine times out of ten, there's some difference there. However, it's not going to be the full results. You're going to need a full series. Okay. 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 Now, I know you're saying you're feeling guilty. Um, I'm a mom, too, so I understand, totally understand that. Um, but I do really believe that to be really great parents, we need to feel good, too. We need to be happy, too. Um, so I'm not saying, you know, don't feed your children, children <laughs> dinner in order to do this. But if this is something that you can financially do, it's going to make you feel better. It's going to make you feel better at the beach when you're playing with them, you know, and leaning over. It's going to make you feel more confident in general with your husband, with, you know, in your life. Um, so if this is really something that is, is making you feel a little bit insecure, it's absolutely worth it to do something for yourself. Okay, I'll do it. Yay. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I'm so excited too. <laughs> okay. So instead of acting all the way through, I was thinking we could stop after each one and see in those, because we have a bunch of different scenarios we're going to give you guys. So we'll stop, see if you guys have any questions on that specific scenario, um, maybe how to overcome things or um because I didn't make it like super challenging like I just wanted to buy but if you've had cases like that where it was like super challenging um or if you guys have recommendations of tips and tricks that you would say so we'll just wait a second see if anybody writes in the chat here and then we'll go into the next scenario can will you do one more and then I'll do two after you yeah okay, okay. All right, everybody's very quiet. Let me look at our next scenario here. All right. And action. All right. <laughs> I tried so hard not to laugh. I tried. Hi, my name is Mark. <laughs> I'm a 45-year-old guy, and I have a lot of, like, my face is just always red and brown. I don't know what's going on with it. And I worked outside most of my life, so maybe that's what caused it. I don't know. Um... And I have a like really bad hooded lids, like to the point where I feel like I have a hard time driving now, but I don't want to have surgery. And the big thing of me not having surgery, it, I just looked at myself in the camera. Um, the big thing of me not having surgery is I really, I do not want anybody to know I'm getting things done. Like, I don't even know if guys do this, to be honest with you. I might be the only one, but. I don't know. I just don't want anybody to, to know I'm getting these, like any treatments done. Do you, what do you, can you even do this? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you shaved your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> it's Friday. Um, Whoa, Mark. you shaved your mustache. <laughs> Mark, absolutely. I want you to know first off that we have a big um, male population that comes to see us. Okay. And a lot of them feel the same way as you. Okay. So please, you know, 
don't be, don't feel weird being here. Um, I would say about one third of our clientele are, are men. We do a lot of treatments that aren't just fluff and buff, you know, yeah. fluffy facials. They, we do a lot of more medical treatments. So this is something that we get a lot. So don't be insecure about, about being here. Okay. Um, when you're in and out of the office, you'll probably see men um, and maybe men that you would not maybe expect to be doing these treatments because we all want to feel good. We all want to look good. Um, and things like you just, you just brought to my attention, your redness, your brown, your brown and your, um, hooded lids. So, so, so common, uh, mm -hmm. for men, especially men don't wear makeup, right? So you're out with no protection all of your life. So I, all I wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> as a man though <laughs> really for real like you're a... <laughs> however you know most men don't wear makeup <laughs> so so all throughout your life you were um unprotected from sun exposure and probably weren't wearing a ton of, of sunscreen by the looks of some of the sun damage that i see um and all three of those can be caused by the sun um, we have a lot of men that had these treatments, uh, a lot of men that have rosacea, um, a lot of men that have sun damage, uh, especially in, in New England. We have a lot of people that have a lot of sun damage uh, because we just bake all summer long because we just want to get warm. <laughs> so this is a really common thing. So don't be nervous about the treatments and about uh, coming here, I promise you. So what I'm going to recommend for you is a series, first is a series of photo rejuvenation treatments. Um, we use IPL Intense Pulse Light, and it is attracted to redness and brown in the skin. So it is going to close up your little capillaries, which is causing your redness, and it's also going to bring any brown spot or pigmentation to the surface. You're going to go through a little bit of downtime. It's social downtime, so it's something that honestly no one's really going to notice unless they're looking really super close at your face. Um, but they, you, if you're looking really close, you're going to see some brown spots that are going to get darker and, and we call it micro crusts. So they come to the surface and they slough off. Um, really, they look like when you go in the sun and your brown spots get darker, um, maybe a little bit darker than that. So it's nothing that you're not going to look like a scary monster. Nobody's going to think that, you know, you got into a car accident after a treat after these treatments. Um, however, you may notice if someone's really looking close at you, they may notice this. So that's for you to know just in case, you know, that's, that's of concern to you if you have an event or if you have, you know, a big meeting at work or something that you know that all eyes are going to be at you then we're gonna schedule that accordingly. Um, how, long, how long will it be like that? It's usually about five to seven days on the face. So the longest it's gonna be, it's about a week. Uh, you're not gonna look you know, your best. Um, however, after that, you're gonna look so much better. Uh, even after one treatment, it's really gonna reduce the redness and pigmentation. We usually I, recommend three treatments, so. I heard there's this thing called a tinted sunscreen could I wear something like that or is it going to make me look like a girl no absolutely we have we have one and we we sell it to a lot of men uh, it's great because it not only covers some of the pigment it doesn't look like makeup um, but it also is protecting you and that's that's actually what I what I was going to talk to you about is protecting your skin from here on out it's really important I'm going to get into um, what we're going to recommend around the eyes um, but all of it is going to benefit from you protecting your skin from here on out think of it like your insurance you know for the treatments that you've done and the money that you've spent you wear your sunscreen it's like keeping it at bay so you don't have to keep coming in every year and do the same exact treatments. You can just do maintenance treatments here and there. I'm going to recommend three treatments of photo rejuvenation for you. Um, and every time we're going to get more and more of that pigmentation and redness to subside. Um, the first time is probably going to be the most downtime that you're going to have. So the most pigment, the darkest pigment is going to come out to the surface. After that, it's really pretty small um, how much downtime you're going to have to have to deal with because we're just going to kind of clean up what was left over from that last one. And then the third one will be the same. Um, you can also use these as maintenance. So say you do true treatments and you're happy, 
then you have that third one for when you're ready to do another one, maybe after a trip to Cancun or after, you know, you, you've been in the sun um, by accident and you got some pigmentation back. So you'll have those. Uh, will will it for more. sure be gone in three? No, I uh, this is average. This is an average um, amount of treatments that we recommend. I like to start people with three um, because that's a, it's just a great average number of treatments that make a huge difference in the skin. Um, and after three, we can kind of decide, do you need one more uh, at, at that the same interval, or do you want to then just start coming in for maintenance treatments? Okay. Uh, discomfort. This is, this is something I want to talk to you about because it is slightly just uncomfortable. It's not the most comfortable treatment. However, I've never had somebody run out of my chair and run into the parking lot. It is not painful. It's just slight discomfort and a little bit of heat after the treatment. Um, some of the pigment, some of the brown spots are going to hold on to some of that heat. And so is the, the little broken capillaries uh, or distended capillaries on your skin. So it's going to hold on to some heat after. It's going to be maybe a little bit warm. Um, it's not something that I recommend you, you know, you go right into like, go right to the gym or you're going to go right to a sauna or anything like that. You don't want to add any more heat. Even a really hot shower right after might be a little uncomfortable. I tell people to kind of treat it. It's not going to be a rash, but treat it like if you had a little rash or a little sunburn, um, then the hot water just wouldn't feel great on it. Um, Does so the treatment, the will it feel like I'm being electrocuted? This is some, This is actually a question I get all the time, and it's so funny that you just said that because I'm trying to think of like no, it is like like, like some, men question. Right, right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely no. <laughs> um, no, absolutely not. It's going to. You first, you're just going to feel a coolness of the handpiece. Um, so that's wonderful because it actually chills the surface of the skin and it helps to kind of desensitize the skin a bit. Um, it also helps protect the skin. So we can go a little bit higher even and you not really feel it because of that chilled handpiece. And this is something that not all IPLs have that we have. Um, so it actually feels nice and cold at first and then you're going to feel a warm little snapping sensation. Um, I've heard it uh, like, a, like a tap, a snap. A uh, rubber band snap um, kind of depends on the person and their pain tolerance, what they say it feels like. But again, it's so quick and then it's done. It's not painful after that one little snap. And then we move to the next spot. One little snap. The whole thing is done in less than 15, 20 minutes. So it's a very, very fast treatment. So even if you think, even if you have really, really low pain tolerance and you think that um, uh, this is just, this is a lot right? It's so quick that it's over before it even feels like it started. Um, we cool you down a little bit right after the treatment. We put sunscreen on you and you're good to go. Will it feel like that on my eyes? I can't with the hooded lids like that. I don't know if I'll be able to do my eyes like I'm scared. No, not at all. No. So we're going to use radio frequency for your eyes. We're going to use something called ST, skin tightening, skin therapy. Um, that is not painful at all. Very, very, very comfortable. You might feel a little heat, a little heat sensation, and a little bit of pressure. Um, and so what we're doing is we're reju rejuvenating your collagen. We're creating new collagens, one and three, those more youthful collagens, to, to help tighten up the area. Um, and I'm going to actually recommend doing your forehead if you have hooded lids. I'm going to recommend doing your your upper face. So we're going to do your forehead. You have a few little lines here that, that will just smooth out. And then also that will help the lid. Um, so we'll go underneath the eye, next to the eye, underneath the brow, and then we'll do the forehead as well. Uh, and that will just give you a little bit more of that lift um, for your lid. Um, we can get really close to the eye. Radio frequency is not harmful to the eye if it's near, if it's close to the eye. We never pulse on your eyeball. Don't worry about that. Um, but we will be really close, whereas you can't do a lot of treatments close to the eye. Um, but radio frequency is very safe to do close to the eye. So we can actually help lift those lids um, by going really nice and close underneath the brow. Do you have, like, I you just want to make sure this works. Like, do you have photos of this? Yes, absolutely. So on my iPad here, I brought it, I brought it home. <laughs> 
So those are great act. photos. Nice. <laughs> a man about your age. I like to, you know, I like yeah. to, to find a similar um, before and after. This is a man about your age. He's had six treatments. Um, he had put in lids. And, and uh -oh. this is his res result. You froze. So I'm my you're frozen My back not yet we'll give it just a second now you're back with the pouty face but then you connect oh. you you froze with the pouty face <laughs> oh no now now you're back but give it just a second because it's like trying to connect to you okay now you're good okay i was um, just so afraid to to freeze in a weird way so i was like no, actually, he froze perfectly, and then you made a pouty face, but that was only frozen for a second. Um, okay, so, uh, like, how often am I going to have to come in, then, to see you? So, for the photo rejuvenation, we're going to see you every four to six weeks. So, we really want a full skin turnover because of that microcrusting before we're going to do another treatment. So, every four to six weeks, we're going to have you come in for that. Um, we can do at the same time, we can do your STIs. However, you're going to have to come in just for the eyes every two weeks. So mm -hmm. every other treatment, we'll do just eyes. And then the next treatment, we would do your full skin rejuvenation plus your eyes. Okay, that's not bad. Um, how long will I be here, you think? Such quick treatments. Um, eyes take 15, 20 minutes. Uh, full face, 15, 20 minutes. So, I mean, I would designate about an hour if we take pictures and talk and, uh, you know, you go to the restroom, I mean, under an hour for sure. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, so lay it on me the price. I want to buy it. One million dollars. <laughs> Got it. Cool, dude. <laughs> okay, so that was our scenario there. I didn't include price being like an issue into that scenario because... You don't always have, you know, the same complications every time. They're just like, hey, how much is it? Okay, great. I'll buy it. There were other you know things. What's, like what's funny? Knowing. What's funny is because um, when I've, I've found that the majority of women do more research on price, whereas men research the place more. Oh, that's good to I know. I found that. I never have problems with men with, with, the, with the price. You would think that they would be like, what? That's crazy. Like, girls are paying this? It's not that way, it, especially the more medical treatments. Okay. So I, I feel like a lot of men, and I know I'm generalizing and everyone's different, but right. a lot of men would not spend $100 on a facial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you give them a $250, $300 price for a skin rejuvenation, and they don't blink because it's more medical. They think of it more as like Worth a- it worth it medical you know not fluff and buff massage mm -hmm. although they, men love those things for um, sure but i don't think that they really not again not all of them but i don't think that the majority of men are going to um feel okay with spending all of that on relaxation do you know yeah. um but well, some men like just need that monthly massage because they have a bad back or whatever well, exactly exactly and like need that pedicure yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. so <laughs> that's different that's different yeah. for sure um but i've just just that's just what i've seen it's not across the board i have had men go oh no way yeah. but but for the the majority of men i've i always kind of assume that they're going to freak out a little bit about price right and they yeah. surprise me every time that they don't and that's maybe great. they are and they just don't want to show it right like oh i can afford them yeah yeah that's good to know that's good advice all right you want to throw one on me by the way you guys be, be kind because i don't do consultations so i'm gonna try my best you're gonna rock it yeah <laughs> we'll see okay okay can you tell it may lean on you every once in a while, my patient. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just like, like pop out and come back and be like, <laughs> <laughs> a totally different person. We should have gotten wigs. <laughs> Next time. Next All time. Right. 
I'm very excited about this. Okay. <laughs> Why is it crooked? <laughs> I shaved a little funny this morning. You did so well. I did a Charlie Chaplin accidentally, and you did a great one. I lo it looks like I could get something caught in this thing. Like, <laughs> I might have to right. get this as a tattoo. Um, no. This is how we try to keep you guys um, awake during our webinars. Yeah. <laughs> or they're just like, what in the world? But that's okay, too. Okay. So, hi. Hi. I'm Justin. Hi, Justin. I love your Kimberly. mustache. I haven't seen a mustache like that in years. I know. I, I wax it. Oh, that's great. Every morning. Yeah. So I, as you can see, have thick, coarse, dark hair. Uh -huh. um, and I love it for my mustache. Okay. But I have it on my back. And it's really, really embarrassing. Um, it's, it's thick. It's coarse. Um, I tried to wax once, and that was just... The worst thing I've ever, have ever, ever, ever had in my life. Um, <laughs> okay. I'll never do it again. So I'm very nervous to even talk about anything else. Um, however, this needs to go. It's bad. It's dark. It's thick. It's coarse. Um, and it gets irritated when I shave. Uh, it, it's no good. Um, however, I've heard hair removal is so painful and if i couldn't even handle a wax i don't i don't know if i can handle it okay so i, I completely i thought you were going to stay that way i can't, so, I, can't I can't look at myself i can't do this so i completely completely understand um you know that that issue we have many many male clients that not only just do their their back but they'll do their you know their legs their neck because maybe they get ingrown hairs and a lot of times shaving can create ingrown hairs as well so that's probably a lot of the irritation and also um razor rash and plus it's just hard to reach back there so i completely understand now i also understand that you heard that it was really uncomfortable and you tried waxing there's no way of waxing ever getting to that point of being being comfortable. So as a woman, I've tried it in the past before I did laser hair removal, so I understand that. Um, but with our technology, we have two things that are gonna keep you very comfortable. Well, I, I'm not gonna overpromise that it's gonna be so very comfortable and you're not gonna feel anything. So I do want you to understand, you will feel some heat and possibly a, a, a snapping sensation. However, two positives to this. One is the, the crystal that's actually touching your skin, which is the handpiece, is cold. So that is going to help with any of that strong heat sensation because you're feeling a lot of the cold, so you're not feeling as much of the heat. Additionally, as your operator, I use a lot of pressure. So when I really push the handpiece with that cold tip, you're not going to feel it as strongly. So maybe, you know, like your wife or female friends or male friends that have had laser hair removal, maybe their technique was different. Maybe the technology was different where it didn't have a cold tip. They didn't use a lot of pressure. So with those two techniques, you're going to stay more comfortable. Another positive to this is that your first treatment is going to be the worst and it's going to get better from there. So whatever you feel on your first treatment, just know that the next time you come back, it's going to feel a lot less. Then the next time you come back, it's going to feel a lot less. Why? Because that hair is going to start to thin. So it's not going to be as dark. It's not going to be as coarse. It's not going to be as dense. So even after the first treatment, you're going to get a result. And I know that you said it was embarrassing and maybe you want to go shirtless and go to the beach. And so I know you're really wanting this. So it's worth it to you. And a lot of times when people get treatments done, if it's not worth it to them, they feel more pain. But when it's worth it for them, it's, it's a lot less. So at each time you come in though, the hair is going to get thinner, finer, great for you because you can see the results, but additionally great for you because it's not going to hurt so bad. So what I want to do though is I want to take you in the room and have you feel it. So then you are prepared when you come back when we do the full back. And this is also a good time for me just to test on your skin and find your parameters, your settings that we're going to use. So really the, for this first treatment, it's going to go so slow as well. So I'm going to pull 
two to three times in one spot, one, two, three, just a little area, and I'm gonna stop. And I'm going to, to really assess. So it's not gonna be like, you know, I'm going a million miles an hour on the back and not giving you a, any, any moment to breathe. So I'm just gonna slowly test, let you feel that sensation. Then when you come back, you really know what to expect. So how many times do I have to, how many times do I have to be, how many times do I have to like come in and like how long every time? So for the full back, I'm going to say for our first treatment, I'm going to add on about 15 minutes to the first treatment just to make sure that I'm doing it safely. You know, we, we get the right settings for you to really see a result after the first one. So I'm going to say the first one will book you for 45 minutes. Then the next time you come in, it will only be a 30 minute treatment because I'll already have your settings and I'll be able to just go in there and, and get it done in 30 minutes. Uh, it could be even less. And each time you come in, it's probably going to be less and less because you're not going to have as much hair. Uh, so it'll be quicker and quicker. Uh, I'm going to recommend looking at his back. I'm going to pretend like I'm looking. I'm going to recommend, <laughs> I'm going to recommend a series of, Heather, would you do eight or 10? I always like to do, I always like to do too many than too yeah. little, but in your spa, you also allow them to add on like another package. I do. So I do it a little bit differently um, than than maybe others that, that I agree with as well. Um, I always just sell a package of six to start. Okay. And I tell them that that's the low end. Okay. So as long as I kind of make, you know, note that that's going to be the, the low end, that you that six to ten is average. Okay. Um, and then I also will offer a package of eight, which includes some maintenance treatments, should okay. you be done in six. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say it like this then. Um, okay, so with it being a, a bit more dense and coarse and dark, uh, to be safe, I'm just gonna recommend a series of eight. Now we may get to that end goal in six, and don't feel like you've wasted any money at that point because maintenance is is going to be needed with hair removal. How often you're needing the maintenance is really based on each individual. Sometimes it's every six months, sometimes it's every year, and sometimes people can even go beyond a year. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you. When you start to see any type of hair follicles come back, then you can call and use one of those sessions for your maintenance treatment. But I'm going to say, let's do eight just to be safe. We may get there in six, uh, you know, but if we don't, you know, you, you have that full package. So like, what if I'm done in four? Again, you'll have, you'll have them for maintenance. Um, additionally, if you're done in four, which I, with it being dense and coarse and, and dark, I, I more so see it in at least six, but let's just say you're happy in four. You'll have four for maintenance. However, you may think, well, that's like four years of maintenance. I don't need that many. What you can do is you can take one of those treatments and try it on, maybe you you know wanted hair removal somewhere else, or maybe um, you you know wanted to do something additional like a, I can even say a facial, like a facial, or you know maybe removing some brown spots. Anything cosmetically that we do in terms of the technology, we can take one of those treatments, try it out on you if you love it, great, then that can, you know, that we can roll another one of those treatments into a new package. So never feel like you're wasting money. We can always do things with those, either it being maintenance or you trying something uh, different or just a different area of hair removal. So I am so down. I want to do this, but what do I have to do? Uh, but like before the treatment or like, is there anything I can't do during the treatment? Yeah. So, I mean, it's not too, too much, but there's a couple of really main things that I'll, that I'll discuss. And also I'm going to print out a sheet for you. It's a pre and post care guideline. So I want you to have that today just as a reminder of things that you shouldn't do before, you should do before, and then additionally after. So uh, best thing to do is going to be shave, and I know that that's, seems like, well, I didn't want to shave, you know, I, I had razor irritation. Um, but the best thing to do is shave the day before, because if you do have any type of razor irritation, if you shave the day of, that heat is going to feel a bit more intense. So 
um, we'll, we'll have you shave the, shave the day before. If there's hard to reach places and maybe someone can't help you, don't worry, we have a razor at the office so I can help you out with those hard to reach places. But just try to get as much as you can the day before just to re reduce that risk of, of razor burn. Um, and we'll do that each time that you come in. Additionally, with it, you know, summer coming, and I know that that's why you're coming to me in spring probably is, is you want to be able to, to take off your shirt and not worry about that. So with summer coming though, we just want you to be careful in the sun because we are using a light based technology. Uh, it, IPL, it's intense pulse light, lasers are light. So any of those technologies, you have to be careful in the sun. So we have really good sunscreen here. I'll make sure when I take you up to the front desk, I'm gonna you know, show you that product. It's an SPF 50. And we wanna make sure that you're using this anytime you're out in the sun. Now, if you can avoid just being out in the sun a week before and a week, no, I'm sorry, two weeks before the treatment and uh, two weeks after the treatment to just try to keep it covered but if you really do need to take off your shirt we do have this great SPF 50. now i don't recommend that though the week before and the week after you have to be very careful in, in, in that case uh, so we can absolutely plan your treatments around any type of vacation you may have if you're going out to the lake we can we can um, work with you on that and making sure to book your treatments not too soon to your vacation Sign me up. <laughs> I do. That was so good. I did okay? Yeah, you're hired. My first consultation. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, we have, okay, so we just did three. Oh, so this is halfway. So I was going to say I should allow a bathroom break just because this is a bit of a longer um, webinar. So we just covered three. We have three more that we're going to do, three more scenarios. Um, we'll take 10-minute bathroom breaks so you guys don't miss anything. Um, and then when we come back, Heather, I'll be the, uh, you, you'll be the patient again. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So it is 22 after the hour. So let's come back 32 after the hour. Again, you guys don't have to log off. You can stay on easier. We can't see you. We can't hear you. So back in 10 minutes. Sound good? Sounds good. All right, see you in a second.
Okay, so we're back. Um, I wanted to ask you guys something. I just want to make sure that this is going to be recorded okay. Um, actually, I'll ask you, Heather. Am I, are you big on the screen right now, or am I big on the screen right now? You are. Okay. Um, am I always big on the screen, or does it ever go to you? Uh, it, on my end, it's always you. Okay, so, and it's always you for me. So that's, I'm sure then it will record just fine. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, I, I had to scrub my finger almost off. <laughs> I still have mine on. I was like, I gotta get rid of this thing. Um, and it was very hard. <laughs> was Although like, I smeared it uh, on my face. That's what I was nervous about, that it was going to get all over me. But I did not need to be nervous because it was not leaving my finger. I was like, well, I'm going to have a tattoo of a mustache on my finger. Okay, so um, we'll get started with our next scenarios. Again, I just want you guys um, to know that anything that you guys need us to demonstrate for you, talk about um, with you, any issues you may be having in consultations, any advice you wanna give after our acting scenarios, please, please feel free to, to chime in. That's what we're here for. Okay, so uh, you'll be the patient again. And action. Okay. We have our scenarios that we're, we're looking at. Okay. You, you want it to be the 50 year old age skin, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right. I forgot which ones we, uh, we decided on. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if I was a, if I was a woman and I was like, so how do I get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> now we're done with our male parts. <laughs> I know. So what should I? <laughs> right. What should I do for this mustache on my chin? Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> do anything with it. <laughs> oh gosh. Very oh, good. Thing. Okay. That's good. So hi, I'm Jan. Hi, Jan. That's my mom's name. Jan? Yeah. Did I know that? Maybe not. Well, Janet, but a lot of Janet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I'm. My name's Jan. I'm 50. I just turned 50 this year. Um, I'm seeing a lot of wrinkles. Uh, a lot of um, like a jowl. This this area just looks so loose, and I hate it. Every time I take a picture, I just hate the way this looks. Uh, especially from the side, it's just, it's, it's, I have no jawline anymore. I used to have such a nice jawline. I look at pictures when I was 20, 30, and it's just, it's not there anymore. Uh, my lids, my lids are so heavy. Um, and I, I, you know, I feel like I can almost see them, you know, I, I really just don't like the way my eyes look. Um, doesn't look like me. I look in the mirror and I just don't see myself anymore. And it feels like it happened overnight, but I know it didn't. Um, I haven't done anything, nothing. Um, I've had, I got a facial on vacation 10 years ago. That's about all I've done. Um, you know, I use just regular products from my dermatologist, you know, see the bill, whatever. Um, but I think it's too far. I think, honestly, I mean, I know a lot of people start doing this stuff when they're 40, I'm 50, and there's a lot going on. So I just think I'm too far gone. But I don't know. Just came in to see what what you recommend. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I I completely understand this that it feels like it happens overnight, and that's really how it feels. Um, I started getting the the jowls quite young. I think I was about 35 when I started getting jowling, and um, you know started started treating it. Uh, but it does feel like it, it's overnight, so I understand that. And happy, happy 50th. Um, I want to, I want to assure you that you're never too far gone. There's, there's so many technologies out there now in this world and in my med spa that you're never too far gone. Um, and I, I understand that, you know, most people don't want to have surgery. They don't want to look different. 
uh, they still want to look like themselves and they don't want that downtime or the expense, so on and so forth. So some people think that it's like just surgery is, is all that, that I can do. And it's just not the case anymore now in 2020. Um, okay, so let's start talking about the different things that, that I have to offer within the office where we can fix the things that, that you've mentioned that are bothering you. Um, first, we'll start talking about, you were, you were saying the, the jowls and to the side. And then this is typically when I would like look at them and start to feel like, is it fat? Is it just loose skin? And I would assess that. So I'm gonna say that, <laughs> I'm going to say that I've assessed you with some some fat volume and some loose skin. So just like typical jowling. Um, okay, so for that, you know, at, when we're youthful, if you look back at our photos in our 20s, we have so much fat here in the in the upper face in the cheek area, we start to lose a lot of it here and we start to gain it in this area and and in this area. So that is why that jawline has has started to kind of dissipate for you and you can't see it as well is because we have that accumulation of fat now down here and, and laxity. So we have a handpiece, it's radio frequency. And really what that is, is it's heat. So really what we're able to do, and, and I kind of want to take a step back in, in understanding how these technologies work in the different skin depths. So the deepest depth that we would work in with the skin is going to be your fat layer. And so addressing those, the, that fat issue. Right above the fat layer, we have two collagen elastin layers. And you've probably heard about collagen elastin. Well, it makes our skin stronger and it gives us that bounce back to our tissue. So with this handpiece with heat, we're going to put it in the fat layer so we can shrink the fat in this area so we can really strengthen that jawline. And additionally, we're gonna put the energy into the collagen and elastin layers. So we make sure to tighten that skin as well. So that handpiece will address both of those issues at the same time. And typically you'll see a result after one. Now, what I also like to do is take a different handpiece and just go right underneath the cheekbone. Reason for that is what I spoke about earlier is that our fat is usually here and then it accumulates here. And we start to lose that, that strong kind of um, contoured cheekbone, right? And we start to kind of flatten here and we can't see the balls of our cheeks as much. So we don't want to just uh, address this and not really think about the upper face, right? Because you were saying the eyelids are bothering you. When we take that handpiece right underneath that cheekbone, it will contour, it will define your cheekbones and the balls of your cheek. So those two things together, getting rid of the jowling, plus increasing the, the youthfulness of the balls of the cheek and the contouring is going to really take those years off of the face. Um, now, with that same radio frequency technology, we're also able to take it around the eyes. So we can take it really low on the lids without pulsing on the eye. I'll still be on the bone, but I can strengthen the collagen elastin above the brow, below the brow, to really get a lifted lid. Um, but I wouldn't just want to treat here and here. I would want to take it all the way around to make sure we address the crow's feet and any type of creepiness that you don't have right now, but we could start, you know, seeing that years to come. And it's better to start earlier than wait. So if we're going to do the, the hooded lids, we may as well really focus on the collagen that you have now at 50. And I don't want you to think that 50 is old and you've lost all of your collagen elastin. It's not, you know, you still have it there. So we still are able to target that really, really well. So it's kind of like the same thing as like Botox? It's going to be different. And if you are, um, you know, possibly thinking of Botox as well, I do recommend we compare those those treatments together. So Botox is going to be uh, something that is injected into the muscle and it's going to paralyze the muscle so you can't make these these expressions as much. So for example, when when we get mad, we scowl and we start to create the deep line here or the double lines. Um, when we're surprised and we raise our eyebrows, that's when we start to create the, the um, lines on our forehead. When we smile, which is hopefully hundreds of times a day, we start to create the crow's feet. 
So if we're, if we're really bringing back the time with your skin and we're fixing all of that collagen elastin in those areas that are bothering you and you're still creating those expression lines, then when we pair Botox and you can't make those strong expressions, plus we're working with the collagen elastin, that's when they're gonna really pair beautifully together. So if it's something, if, it, if Botox was never something that you were even considering, don't worry, you know, you're, you're still gonna see that result. And I understand some people just scared of injections or just don't like the idea of it. So this is another way of treating the skin and, you know, really focusing on those wrinkles. But if Botox is something that you were also considering, we can pair those together. Can I do the tightening and then do Botox if I need a little bit more? Well, so y yes, if you need a little bit more. So we could do them in the same day. So what we would do is the, the full skin tightening, like you said, and then we would put in the Botox. Now, if you want to start with just a little bit to see how you like it and then add more, uh, you know, later, that's completely fine. We can do that. So Botox takes about a week for the full effect to, to show. So if you're loving it and think, okay, I want to add a, a little bit more to my forehead or my eyes, wherever it may be, we can do that next time you come back in for your skin tightening treatment. We would do the skin tightening and then add a little bit more Botox next time you come in. I'm not really, I think Botox scares me. Okay. But maybe I'll, you know, maybe I'll start with the skin tightening and then do Botox in the future if I get a little bit braver. Is that okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you're going to see a beautiful result with just the, the radio frequency itself. And we have before and after photos of patients that decided not to do Botox as well. So you can really see the improvement. And then that's something that you can add on in the future. Absolutely. Okay. Um, how many treatments uh, do you recommend for my low face? So for the lower face, I would probably recommend six treatments for you. Uh, if you need a one or two extra after, you know, we can always assess, but typically you're going to see a, a beautiful result with, with six. Now, if you're happy at like four or five, don't feel like you've, you know, spent too much money and you wasted money and those are all down the drain. That's not the case. You can use those then for maintenance. So we recommend maintenance once every three to four months. So it's just one treatment every three to four months. You would come back in. Think of it like seasonally. So once in the spring, once in the summer, once in the fall, once in the winter, you'll come back and, and we'll do one treatment. So you can use that for maintenance. And I also just want to talk about too, uh, you know, we're, we're, always aging, right? So our collagen elastin production is always going to keep slowing down. So if you're coming in once every three to four months and, and keeping that collagen really strong, that's when you're going to hold those long lasting results without changing the look of your face, but really slowing down that, that aging process. Well, so my friends are very against Botox, my family, my friends, and fillers and all that stuff. Will anybody know that I'm getting these treatments done? Because I don't even want my husband to know. Yeah, absolutely. I understand that. <laughs> Completely understand that. Um, my my ex-husband was the same way. And, you know, I'd have to kind of sneak around and, and do things. Uh, but that's what's great about radio frequency is that there's no downtime. You'll have a little bit of pinkness to the skin that only lasts maybe 30 minutes. So by the time you get home, it would be gone. Um, and no, no one would ever know. The only thing that, that we hear if people are just like not wanting to tell anybody is that they start getting compliments of you just, you, what, what are you, you know, you look really well rested, you know, what's going on. And, you know, it's not something that's so dramatic where your lips are all of a sudden five times bigger because of a lot of filler, you know, and they're like, oh, she definitely got filler. It's not like that. It's something that it's just, it, and it's also a slower process. So when we do the treatment, we wait a couple weeks and we do another one. Then we wait a couple weeks and we do another one. And then collagen keeps remodeling for even months after that. So it's such a 
just slow process that people are just like, wow, you just look really well rested. And maybe they think it's a serum that you're using where you know the, the secret of what you're doing. With Botox too, you know, if we start out minimally, even, you know, people will, I've heard husbands say, I'll know if you do Botox, you better not, I'll know. And nine times out of 10, the male, even if they did the, the full amount of Botox, never knows. So if we do something very minimally with Botox the first time, I bet you anything, no one's ever going to know that as, um, as well. Well, you don't have any Botox, right? I do. Yeah. <laughs> and I have full movement of my facial features. So that's the, that's the key is doing things minimally in the beginning and no one would know. And that's how radio frequency works with the skin. Here is my uh, credit card. Welcome to Bright Med Spa. We're so happy to have you as part of our family. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I'm so excited for you. <laughs> oh, I'm going to think of this every time I say that to everybody. Yeah, yeah, I'm so excited for you. Um, okay, so we just got a question. Okay, question. Do you keep file folders for each client, or where do you keep notes on each person? We don't want to use our dental software since all of our spa portion clients aren't dental clients. Want to keep it separate. Is there special software out there um, out there to, oh, okay, that was just a typo. Um, Heather, what do you do at your spa? So there's a few different things that you can do. Um, a lot of your, um, a lot of like the, the point of sale systems um, programs have a place that you can put notes within the appointment, within the person's profile. Um, we use uh, something called Booker. Um, and I know Vagaro has something similar. Um, however, there are a lot out there. Um, so what was the other company you just said? Booker and what? Booker and Vagaro, V-A-G-A-R-O. Uh, B-A-G-E-R-O? V. Oh, V. Sorry, let me delete. Hold on. Okay, V-E-R. <laughs> I think it's Vagaro, V-I-G-E-R-O. Oh, my God. <laughs> V-I-G-E-R-O. You know, I could have just done it. That's funny that I just made you do that. Um, well, now it'll really stick in their minds. Yes. I think it's actually, hold on. I think now, I think it's that. But oh, okay. Right. Anyway. Perfect. Perfect. Anyways. Um, however, um, I love a physical chart as well um, for a few different reasons. One, I love to have, this is funny that it's still on my finger. Um, one, I like to have the treatment sheets and the treatment logs right there in front of me and, and um, everybody that's doing treatments in my office because it's going to give you that cheat sheet. So I like physical chart because of that. Um, the other reason that I love them is because I can write little notes. I can have like treatment logs in there um, and consultation logs. Um, that actually have the, the information and it's right in front of my face. Now, if you can figure out how to do this on an iPad, on a laptop, in the computer, um, thank you, Heather. Yes. Vagaro Pro. Thank you. Oh, someone yeah. new. <laughs> yes. Oh, Vigaro. awesome. Oh, wonderful. I butchered it. We both butchered it. Sorry. You um, got, you got pretty close. But I, yeah, I haven't actually used that one, but I've heard really good things about it and we've been looking into it. So, so yes, yeah, so there there are ways that you can actually put notes into um, your actual your your booking system, mm -hmm. um, but I still love the paper chart for just personal notes. I think having both is ideal if you if you can do it because there you know you, it's almost like you're you're protecting yourself should something happen to your to your Software. database. Mm -hmm. um, and also in your office, you know, some something happens, got a bit of fire or something, and you lose mm -hmm. your physical charts. You also have that uh, in your software. So mm -hmm. having a both uh, is what I recommend. Um, I write tons of notes on people. Um, like we talk about this during consults, during treatments. I love writing personal notes um, about them. Make sure that they're, you know, they're not anything 
mean or anything, you know, this person was awful today or anything like that. It's, I like to write positive notes in there that if they ever saw that they, the chart, they wouldn't, they would be appreciative. They wouldn't actually, Mm -hmm. you know, scour at whatever you wrote um, because it's really great to feel remembered. So we see so many people, I know I talk about this a lot, but I really think it's important. We see so many people every day and over the course of a year, two years, three years, um, that it's hard to remember details about what you talk about with someone. And if you're in the room with them for more than 20, 30 minutes, uh, you're going to get a lot out of them, you know, like it or not, (laughs) they're going to tell you all about what's going on in their life. Um, And remembering some of those details is really important. So I like to take their notes on consultations and also just during treatments. Um, so I have a treatment log that I always have within the, in the patient's chart that I write this. Could you do this, the same exact thing, um, throughout a software booking system or, uh, then you, absolutely you could. I just would make sure that you have it readily available. Uh, so it's not something that you go out to the front desk and you make right. notes. You on. have a computer in each treatment room. In each treatment room, even if you bring it, you know, right. some offices iPad. have them on, uh, like a, on a tray and they'll bring it from room to room with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can do that. Absolutely. You can have it on an iPad if, if it's, if the technology allows that, uh, it's just important to be able to use that and look at it and, and use it during your consultation and, and or treatments. Yeah. We can't stress charting enough. So that was a great question because, um, charting is so important, but it's also important to make notes during consultations too. You know, why didn't they buy the, the first time? You know, what was their challenge? What were the other things that they were bringing up? Like they, okay, they bought hair removal today, but they were bringing up a lot of other things that bothered them. Make sure to have that down. Like Heather said, when you're running a special, you know, well, Tammy was asking about the laxity on her belly when she bought hair removal. Great time to send this out for, um, for your promotion on skin laxity on the body. We have a couple more personal notes too are really nice. People really enjoy them. So uh, if somebody just purchases hair removal um, and they talked a lot about body contouring and you write them a personal email, a note, text, whatever, uh, saying, hey, we're doing this special. I remember you were interested in this. They feel really special. They're like, oh, that person remembered me. Remembered me. Thought of me um, during this. Um, I know I I like that. Even like... um, the, the girl that uh, did my lashes before all of this, she's probably like this with every single person, but I felt like she was my best friend. So when I would go in, she would remember things about me and talk to me and ask about my daughter and all this stuff and want me to bring her. And it, she would text me certain things. Hey, we got this new lash serum in. I think you would like it. You mentioned that you felt like your lashes were sparse after having a baby guess what I did? I went right in there and, and bought it because my hair salon that I used, my hair salon that I used to go to here in Las Vegas for years and years and years was the exact same way. They were very expensive. They were very foo-foo and fancy. However, they did everything right. They remembered everything about me. They made you feel like you were the most beautiful person to walk in there, that you had the most beautiful hair. Um, even if you felt like you didn't and it's like, man, you know, but the, when you walked out of there, you're like, I am the most beautiful person. I do have the best hair. That's what they thrived for. And yeah. it was, it went from the hairstylist to the assistants, to the people that were checking you out of the comments that they made on your hair color and the blow dryer, whatever it may be. But when you, God, when you put that kind of time in, I mean, I, I probably would have never left that hair salon. I moved to New York City, and that's why I did. But I probably would have stayed with them forever. And they were not cheap. I agree 100%. I think, I think that um, you can't even put a price on on building these relationships with people. Yeah. Um, if you don't have somebody in your office that is that that that's one of their main jobs is building up these relationships with people and doing consultations and I would recommend it. You know, it can be somebody that's already doing treatments. It doesn't have to be a new hire. You don't have to, you know, have a specific amount of dollars a year on, yeah, on like a personal, whatever. But uh, if you're the business owner, have that be you. Yeah. Or if you're a really large office, 
make sure your front desk people are not grumpy, hate their job. Those front desk people are so vital to your business. It's the first, so, it's the first face they see when they walk in and it's the last face they see when they walk out. And when they are chipper and happy and welcome and it's so good to see you again, Carrot. So, you know, thank you so much, Heather. We can't wait to see you in two weeks. When it's that kind of feel at your whole front desk, it makes, it's going to make the world of difference for your business if you are a large office. I like to talk a lot about complimenting too. Um, I love, I love, yes. I mean, what are we all talking What Both scenarios we talked about, we were talking about being complimented and feeling good. A, people come in when they are insecure about something. So giving them some kind of compliment, you don't have to compliment them on the thing they're insecure about. Obviously, right. you know, you can tell them that the lip color they're wearing just looks really good with their skin color, or skin tone, or you know, that, Beautiful oh, hair. I love your earrings. Where did you get them? Right. It, just pick something that you really, truly believe is true, you know, and right. make them feel good because they're going to be in a totally different place. If they're feeling that love and feeling that confidence, mm -hmm. then if they're in that insecure, in their own, you know, body, mind, space, um, and not comfortable with you because yeah. they will look at you. They'll look at everything about you. And even if you're super insecure about yourself, they're looking at all of the things that they don't have about you. Right. That they're telling you, like, say I'm talking to Kara right now and I do have a lot of chin hair and I'm looking at her and she has no chin hair. How does she have not one chin hair? You know, yeah. I I'm going to be extra nervous that mm -hmm. she can even see my chin hair mm -hmm. and talking about it is just but should you compliment me on my hair i'm like oh well i have beautiful hair yeah even though it's in here. i don't yeah. know it's just it's just a feeling that it you is can, you can give and it helps you with sales um and I, I absolutely you know don't want everybody to uh compliment the heck out of every single person that walks in and seem fake and yeah and it's got to be authentic be fake mm, yep. no, you look great. no I don't want that that's not that doesn't no. do anything for you no it's, it has to be genuine yeah it has to be uh from the heart yep. and we do love these people these people are you know they they make our you know they they our livelihood is because of them, right? Right. We pay our bills because of them, but also we got into this industry so that we can help people and we can fix their problems and you can make them feel confident. Yeah. And so it, there's a lot that goes into that. It's not just giving them these, these great treatments. We know that we know we have awesome treatments. We know we can, we can fix things and we know what we can fix and how many treatments and all that. But a lot of these things kind of go deep with people. Um, and so consultations, I think getting them is probably one of the most important things of owning yeah. a business. So true. Uh, and there's a lot that goes into that. It's not just the person at the, at that, during that consult. It's the whole vibe. It's the whole office. It's that front desk person. It's that yeah. person calling and making the uh, reminder yep. phone call. Yep. yep. The, um, the, the kindness and the smiles go so far mm -hmm. and even if you're not complimenting them every single time they come in because you feel like ah this is a lot it's not authentic anymore um that just being happy and mm -hmm. thankful that they're there and mm -hmm. happy to see them and not oh, i gotta call them for an appointment reminder i hate my job you can't you can't have that it, you know, that you, your people have to love what they're doing. They have to <laughs> smile. I mean, because Heather and I have gone into so many offices over the years for training and, you know, training offices. And there's been, you know, offices that we walk in and they're, they greet us with open arms and welcome. And we're like, ah, oh, it's going to be the best training ever. And then we've gone into offices where it was almost like they didn't want us there like, in, in the, yeah, in the beginning. But then when they got to know us, then it was like, Oh, we're so happy you're here. But can you imagine if I was a paying client and I got the feeling of they don't want me here? That's totally different. You're going to find somewhere that's going to be warm. Exactly. Warmth. I think that's authentic and warm. Mm -hmm. We have a couple 
people in the chat. Um, okay, so Heather said, loving the scenarios. I'm very new to RF and IPL and want to be able to speak authentically of the treatments, especially knowing resistance I will be up against. Just be authentic. Yes, absolutely, Heather. Um, and, and that will come with time, you know, with you being new to RF and, and IPL, it will come with time of just, you know, keep, like Heather and I were saying, keep studying, keep watching the webinars. You know, we have so many webinars now on RF and IPL. And, um, and when I do the didactics uh, on those webinars, I have... I, I don't, I guess dumbing it down isn't the right word, but slightly, you know, because I, I can't train people using crazy engineer science numbers. You're not going to understand the technology whatsoever. Um, and, and when I was trained in the, in that type of scenario, I didn't know anything. Then I couldn't relay it to anyone. So I train in a way where you're going to understand it, but so could anybody else, you know? So when you're watching those webinars and you're learning, you can even take a lot of that into your consultations. And, and if you feel like you're using words that they may not understand, you know, just simplify that then too. Like instead of um, saying the reticular dermis, you know, you're just going to be talking about the layers of the skin with collagen elastin so they understand. Um, I mean, you don't have to dumb down your talk track so much because when you're talking to people, they also want to know that you know what you're talking about, right? You're smart and, and you know these technologies well. But, you know, definitely take it down just a bit to not overwhelm them. Um, and we have a lot of uh, webinars on practice development, too, in, in terms of um, tools that we have that you can use for talk tracks. Um, lots and lots of tools that, that you can use. So. I recommend even going back and watching those again, the practice development ones, watching the RF and IPL webinars again. I think that will be helpful. Um, I'm glad you're liking the scenarios. Okay, so we got a couple of them again. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, you make it simple and educational. Thank you. That's good to hear. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so we'll go into another scenario. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll give you one now. So I'll be the patient. Okay. And then, and then I'll, you'll be the patient on the last one. All right. Um, sorry, we text a lot. I'm noticing. Okay. So yours is. Okay. I got it. Okay. Um, and action. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I'm 27, and I have really dark hair on my underarms and bikini area. It's pretty dark and coarse and thick, um, and I have some hair above my lip. It's not as, like, dark and coarse and thick is like my bikini but you know I don't like it I can still see it um but the problem is in my early 20s I think I was like 22 I tried to get hair removal and I didn't get a result so it was just like this huge waste of money for me um and I just don't want to do that again but I still like I my I've heard from like friends that it worked for them you know, why didn't it work for me? I don't understand, but I just want to make sure that it's going to work and that I'm not wasting my money. Understandable. Um, unfortunately, I do hear this a lot, um, and it's something that we don't see in our practice, and I can explain to you why. Um, however, we do hear this a lot. Hair removal has come a long way. Um, there are so many different devices out there in the market, um, and there are so many different offices that uh, have different 
operators that may have different skill levels. Um, so unfortunately, we do hear this, that some people just aren't seeing the results that they were promised um, because, because of those two things. Uh, there are devices on the market that just are not as strong. There are devices in the market from, from China that, that um, are, are you know, big and beautiful and look great, very, very inexpensive for the practice. And then also just devices that have not been maintenanced in years and years, and they're still using the same device and uh, not getting that same result. So our goal with hair is to heat up the follicle. Um, and so we use an IPL to heat up the follicle. It travels down the hair follicle into the root and it disables the root. So as long as you have pigment in your hair and you don't have any hormonal issues, you will get great results with this, as long as there's that color. Uh, as long as the hair is dark and darker than the actual skin, then you will get results with our device. And um, we see that, we see that, you know, day after day. Um, but I'm so sorry that that was the case for you. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I don't have your treatments in front of me. I don't know your settings and your device and where you went and all of that. Um, but I can tell you that I do hear this, um, because it, it's, it's just that like, like anything, any kind of job, there are different um, types of operators, right? That, that some really have a lot of knowledge on the device that they're using and some do not. And then it also, unfortunately, there are so many different types of devices out there on the market. Um, we see really, really, really great results, even just after one treatment. We are going to recommend a series of treatments, but after one treatment, you will really notice a significant difference. And if you didn't notice a significant difference after one treatment, it probably just meant that the device or the treatment was not effective. That's what I was going to say is um, I've talked to friends and they said that they had like heat after and like sometimes like it looked like that a rash or something. Mm -hmm. And I never, like, I never had any of that. Like, there was, yeah, like, nothing was, like, like, nothing happened, really. So the treatment probably just wasn't strong enough for you for whatever reason. Um, and so they weren't, uh, they weren't successfully treating the hair follicles because as I see that your hair is pretty dark. Um, you should have gotten something called perifollicular edema or erythema, which is a redness and irritation to the hair follicle. It's not like, um, like you have poison ivy in the area or something crazy like that. It's just a little bit of pinkness to it. Sometimes some people can get a little bit itchy after, so we tell them to put a little hydrocortisone on it. Um, but it's nothing, uh, it's nothing that anybody else would really notice. It's just going to be a little bit of uh, pinkness to the tissue. Um, so that's actually a good sign. We want to see that. And so what we do is we test you until we get to an endpoint. We want to smell a little smell of burnt hair. We want to see that perifollicular edema or erythema starting to form on the hair follicles. And I'll look right with my loop and really make sure that I'm getting at that. Um, I also want to make sure that you're safe. So I don't want to overtreat you. So I want to make sure that your skin's not angry and red um, around the hair follicles. So there's a lot that kind of goes into it. Um, but we do make sure that you can see, we see results before we treat the entire area. Okay, this is exciting. I, mean, I just never thought it was gonna work for me. So I'm excited. What I would recommend for you in particular, would not, not necessarily recommend this for every person, but why don't we start with one treatment? Why don't we see? Okay. One treatment. Um, I will will charge you the full treatment price. However, we can roll that into a series next time you come in. Okay. Because this technology really speaks for itself, and I promise you, it will be night and day different than that other treatments or those other treatments that you've had before. Okay. So let's start you with one treatment. Let's see how okay. your hair responds. Yeah. And you can kind of go from there. Okay. That's exciting. And we do recommend six to 10 treatments, just so you know, even though you have had treatments in the past, can't vouch for them. Yeah. So um, should they have done something and your hair is a little thinner or finer, or you know, had, 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 did hit some of the different growth cycles, uh, then wonderful. However, if you didn't notice any difference, it probably is like starting over, unfortunately. Okay. Um, 
However, hair removal has come a long way too. It's a little bit less expensive now. It's really for everybody. Um, and it's so much more comfortable. I don't know if the treatment that you had was uncomfortable, but I hear that a lot. And I saw that a lot. I've been in the industry a long time. And so I've used all those other devices. Uh, they were extremely painful. We have a lot of bells and whistles on our device that make this so, so, so comfortable for you. Um, a cooling handpiece, uh, the ability to change the type of pulse in case it is a little bit too uncomfortable um, and perfect for your skin type. So I think that doing one treatment, we can even do it today um, after you sign your consent form, um, we, it would be a great thing uh, to, for you to just see the difference because, like I said, it's just come a long way. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, all right. I think I'm good, and, and I have time to do it today. Great. Cool. Give me your money. <laughs> Don't really say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, so um, one one more scenario. Let me just check the chat really quick. Yes, thank you. What do you recommend for Bella's hair? Oh, that's yeah. We we didn't really. Sorry, I, I, we didn't talk about your upper lip. That's okay. Um, so the same thing. Six to ten treatments. But uh, but with the Bella's hair, if if it's just like Peach fuzz. Like blonde. Peach blood. Okay. So With blonde, like, let's say it's just like. I got you. Straight peach fuzz. You, she's, you said, like you, it wasn't you. Um, the, the upper lip. So uh, let's, let's skip over that because it's the same thing yeah. that we talked about already. Yeah. Um, but and, Bella's hair, it unfortunately, like, I, dermaplaning is, is really good. Thing. Yeah, is going to be your go-to. It's just dermaplaning, yeah. um, you know, monthly if they hate it. Uh, I mean, a lot of women already shave that area, so maybe they're just not wanting to use, like, a big razor. And um, if you offer dermaplaning, then that can be something for it. But unfortunately, with, with like, and and even hair removal, we're bringing those hair follicles more back to, like, a vellus state, a pre mm -hmm. state. It's just they can't see it anymore. Um, so yeah, you can dermaplane the area, uh, to get rid of it, but if it's not, not pigmented now, if they have dark, dark kind of fuzz on their face, then you can treat, but you know, if it's blonde, you really only can feel it. You can't see it. You're not going to be able to treat it with an IPL. Unfortunately. I always like to look under a loop and really look at it and to see if there's some color to it, because if someone's so light, like if they're a straight skin type one, and they have like dark blonde hair, it, it will pick it up because yeah. the contrast is there. Um, however, that same person, that same hair on a skin type three, it's just not going to do anything for because the hair and the, the skin are the same color or, you know, or even the opposite. So um, I do like to look really close during a consultation at the hair if it's on the upper lip or if it's um, on the face. Um, because sometimes it's a mixture of blonde hair and also some, some hair with color. And then you need to explain to them that it's not going to do anything for that blonde hair. Um, they may say, you know, okay, it's not worth it. Most people just want to get rid of the dark, honestly. Yeah, and then they can dermaplane the rest. Yeah. I actually, um, that brings up a really good, um, scenario that I just recently had. So we had a, an email come in to clinical and it was, uh, somebody that got hair removal and then she said it grew back gray after after one treatment of hair removal and that wasn't the case and what I really really liked was one of the um, participants on the webinar a few weeks ago she if if it if it was an older clientele or someone like me I'm 39 but I have gray hair maybe I do have gray hair in other areas too and I just don't I can't tell or if the woman is like in her 50s and she has gray hair on her head, maybe there's gray hair in like the bikini area, let's say. So she waxes a, a little part of it to look and see if it's a mix of gray and dark. And if that's the case, then she's able to not say, all of those hair follicles are going to be gone because the gray ones are not going to be. So when this office did hair removal, it picked up the dark but it can't pick up the gray. So she thought all of her hair grew back gray and that wasn't the case. It was just that the dark hair had been treated. 
so what came out, what she was seeing was the gray. So I liked that trick of just, if you're questioning it, if you can't really see it on a loop, right? Or, you know, you just can't tell that they are older or they do have gray hair naturally like me. I had my first gray at 15 waxing a little area just to see is there any uh, gray hair growth in that in that area too I love that I love also, that also um making sure that they are aware that if they do have a mix of gray the gray is not going to go anywhere and it's still going to be as thick and coarse it's not going to thin um if they know that then they'll be looking out for it a lot of times people are like I didn't know I had that many grays um, women's bikinis, this, I run into this a lot. Underarms, not so much. It tends to stay pretty dark for a long time, but the bikini tends to kind of switch over kind of after the, the hair on your head. Um, and the, the thing is that the actual hair, hair itself can be dark, but when you pull, the root is light. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's the key. So when you're waxing or tweezing and you look under a loop, you'll be actually, you'll be able to see if there's that color to the root. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, all right, so let's go to our next scenario. This will be, uh, you're, uh, you're the patient. A 30-year-old female. Oh, good. All right, I should have gotten some Botox for this one to play a <laughs> I cannot wait, by the you're way. Close to, you're closer to 30 than you are 40, right? I'll be 35 in like a month or two. So jealous. <sighs> well. It's crazy being one year from 40. It's just a odd, weird feeling. Okay, nice. Sorry. My sister's turning 40 this in, in, um, in, uh, yeah, in July, and she's like, mm. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I kind of feel a little bit like that about 35, which is the first time I've actually felt that. Is it the mid 30s? I think I felt like 30 that. was like fun. Uh -huh. I was excited to turn 30, and uh -huh. now I'm like, oh. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, okay, okay. So I'm 30. Heather said, "Haha, some of us are closer to 60." My mom, my mom just turned 60, and she's been ta she was talking to me a lot about that the month or two before she turned 60. Um, you know, some birthdays have not bothered her one bit and some have and uh, 50 she was fine and for some reason 60 I th is the one that like kind of got her the most. So I think there's different like ages in our minds that like some it's like Meh, whatever and some are like, whoa, how did I get here? Oh, where did the time go? Yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I feel like I just turned 25 and I'm like, wait, no. That was 10 years ago. Heather said, I welcome it. <laughs> My mom's welcoming it now. She just had to get past the first month or two, and now she's fine. Well, isn't it just such a different, like, scenario, though, that we have all this, this these technologies? Like, well, that, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid of aging. Well, the only thing I'm afraid of, I'm not afraid of aging one bit because I am in the industry, um, which I'm so thankful for. For me, it's, I haven't had kids yet. So it's like this whole other psychological thing. I think if I had kids and I was turning 40 next year, I would be like, oh, whatever, I'm turning 40. It's that, like, you never think like, yeah. oh my gosh, I'm going to be in this scenario. But yeah. the whole like body face aging type thing, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like Heather, I more welcome it. It's almost like the older that you are, people are like, what? Yeah. It makes you feel better. Uh-huh. Like, I can't believe you're 40. Yeah. We exactly. just tell everyone, like, I'm turning, I'm turning 50 next year. So they're yeah, yeah. like, yeah. what? Whoa, what okay. do you do? Okay. Okay. So my name is Jennifer. And I'm 30. Just turned 30. Um, and I haven't done anything yet. Um, but I'm starting to see a little bit of aging. I just feel like I'm, you know, starting to look a little bit older than in my 20s and I'm just wondering what I can do to kind of maintain what I have now yeah. um, maybe look a little bit better you know smooth a little bit of fine lines um, uh, and and like overall you know wear less makeup and and just kind of look that good for my age what, what can I do well absolutely 
So I think it's very, very smart that you're you're starting now. Uh, I did the same thing. I started um, my my late twenties with doing just you know little things uh, just to make sure that we're not aging too too quickly, <laughs> even though we're we're still going to age, uh, but really slowing that down. So it's very smart you're starting now because at this age you have. So so much to work with. You have so much collagen. You have so much elastin. So we want to make sure we keep it there and keep it strong. Um, I think for you, since you are on a journey to to really, you know, maintain your skin uh, with people that are kind of on that journey, we have a membership uh, program, which I think would be really, really perfect for you. So it's, and then I would pull it out and show them and walk them through it. By the way, you guys, I'm, I'm building another membership. It's going to be a seasonal membership. Um, the marketing team and I are putting that together. So hopefully we'll have a webinar on that soon. Totally different type of membership that we can go through. So anyways, I'll pull out the membership, um, that we have now, which is like the silver gold platinum. And I would show them that, that, um, silver is going to be, I'm just making up a number, you guys. Uh, silver is going to be $100 a month, where gold is 150 and then platinum is 200 So I would more so just really, if someone, if you're 30, I'm not even talking to you anymore, I'm just talking to the people. So <laughs> since you're 30, um, you really don't need to go to the extreme membership. I would just more stay at, at this first one, uh, the silver, because, you know, you're young, you're not needing a lot. So um, with this membership, you can pick from this list one thing every month. So you can, you know, try different things, see what you really see a result with, see what you love, um, and then, you know, play around play around with it. Uh, I would more so start in the beginning doing skin rejuvenation treatments because that's going to tackle a couple different things. It's going to, like you were saying, you don't want to wear makeup anymore. So typically the reason why in our thirties we start to go, gosh, now I have to put makeup on when I, when I go outside during the day and in my twenties, I didn't have to. So it could be a couple different things. It could be pore size, it could be some sun pigmented spots that we got from sun damage. So now our skin maybe doesn't look as as smooth as, as it was before because we have a little discoloration. Um, but smooth isn't the right word. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Anyways, okay, um, and then <laughs> additionally, we want to keep that collagen strong, right? We want to make sure we're not getting into those wrinkles prematurely. We're not getting into like loose skin prematurely. So with skin rejuvenation, we're using a light-based technology, and that's going to help shrink the pore size. It's going to help get rid of those tiny little sunspots on your face, and it's additionally going to keep the collagen strong. So with this, we are also getting just an overall beautiful glow to the skin. So the skin just looks really healthy, shrinking the pores, helping fine lines and wrinkles, helping um, sunspots, all in one technology. So I would recommend starting with that for the first couple months if you're going to join this membership. And then additionally, we have things like peels, we have microneedling, which is tiny little needles that, that go in and also stimulate collagen. Um, we we have a, a hand piece that can plump the lips naturally. So if that's something that maybe you want to do in the future, it's, you know, something you could do. So it's $100 a month. You get to choose. I'm going to be here to guide you though. So if you're not sure what should I do this month, you, I'll definitely keep taking a look at your skin. I'll keep recommending things that okay, we've done six skin rejuvenation treatments for the last six months, let's switch it over to something else. So I'll be here to guide you. But I think since you are just going down a journey of keeping your skin at a really high integrity as you age, the membership is going to be great for you. And then as you age, if you feel like you need a bit more, the, the gold and platinum is when we start getting into combination therapies, where you do two things in one day. So that may be something like when you turn 40, you may want to move up to the, the gold membership to start really doing the combination therapy. Since you're 30, I think the, the silver would be great for you. Um, what about what about products? So I see that you have this product, this product, blah, 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 blah. Um, would you recommend that along with my membership? 
Yeah, and I don't want to start you off on, on too much, right? Because we want to make sure that the products work for you, that you like them. So I'm going to recommend really the, the, the most important ones that are going to go with your treatments. Uh, a big one's going to be sunscreen because the, the treatments that we're going to be doing, it's going to um, create a little bit of light sensitivity, sensitivity to the skin for a couple weeks. So we have a great SPF 50 that you can wear during the day. So that's going to be one of the products. Uh, we have a, I'm just making up stuff. Yeah. We have a, <laughs> we have a nighttime serum that's going to help really lock in the moisture. It's not going to create any breakouts or, um, you know, create any type of large pores or anything like that. So that's going to just help lock in the moisture wearing that at night. Um, I don't know what, what else I would say because I don't like deal, a, with, I don't deal with products. A retinol or some kind of exfoliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. So, yeah, so th those two to three products is what, you know, because here's the thing, doing treatments with us is, is going to be important, but taking care of your skin, and I'm so glad you asked, taking care of your skin at home, they're just going to go hand in hand. So we're, we're going to want to make sure that you're really drinking a lot of water, hydrating before the treatment, so the handpiece can be attracted to all of your, your healthy, hydrated cells, but then also just taking care of your skin in general with these topical products is going to be important too. So they're a little expensive, the products. Is there anything yeah. that you can do? Absolutely. So I'll go through a bit of the membership here uh, down below. And <laughs> if you are going to join the silver membership, you're also going to get a discount on the, the different products too. So oh, great. multiple discounts. I mean, if you ever want to start doing Botox in the future, you get a discount or any type of filler, anything like that. But since you're focused on, on the facial products, you are going to get 10% off anytime you're needing your products and today as well. Um, and how long um, is this, like, how do I, how long do I have to sign up for? Is it, can I, like, do a treatment and check out a month and then, you know, um, cancel? Great, great question. So we want to make sure that you really see good results. So even though you will see something after one, it really takes a series with, with, different tech, with these different technologies. So our contract is six months. And the reason why we set it at six months is because in six months, you really should see a really nice change to your skin. And then you can decide, is this for me? Is this working well for me? Or is it not for me? So uh, we want to make sure you give it time. So we do recommend just the six-month contract. Uh, or or we, we do do the six-month contract. Um, if you wanted to cancel, there will be a fee associated with that. What is our fee? I don't know. You guys can, can make up your fee. Uh, but there, there would be a fee. Um, but I highly recommend, you know, just really trying it out. Again, you came in talking about your journey. So with, and we're always aging. So with a journey and wanting to make sure that we stay as youthful as possible and we keep our skin at, at its best integrity, it does take really a journey with us and coming to see us once a month and um, or that other membership that I created it's a seasonal one so you could say if you want to do that do that membership and said we want to make sure with your journey we're seeing you once every season to make sure that your skin stays at its best integrity sounds great <laughs> I think that would be my favorite client to come in as somebody that really, really wanted like to take a journey with you, you know, like I, yeah. I'm 30 and I want to start it now. And no, I'm ready to jump on whatever ship yeah. you've got. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and just wanted to try everything. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where the memberships are really nice too. Um, okay, you guys. So that was our last scenario. Um, any questions that you guys have before we sign off? I hope this was helpful. Um, you know, just giving you maybe like real life type scenarios that it was hard for you to overcome or um, just in general, you know, talking to clients and, you know, some of them we didn't really get into the technology all that, all that deeply. Some of them right. we did. So, you know, so for some people you need to dive in deep. For some people you don't, um, you know, don't, 
don't talk yourself out of the sale. <laughs> Some people don't want to know all of that and get confused. So, you know, you can really. I've, I've seen, um, I've seen people do that during like when I'm in trainings and, and I'm kind of just observing that they, they like use the frequently asked questions and they say all of them. And at the end people are like, because they weren't even wondering if it was going to be painful. Oh, right. And you know, and, that, or they yeah, just things like that, that like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that, you know, if, wait until they ask and then exactly. talk about it when they ask. I know yeah. we did that a little bit just because we wanted to cover a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but most people are not going to ask a million, million questions. And those people, because you will run into them, um, they're kind of few and far between. And the, you learn a lot from those consults about yourself, your knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, another big thing that we didn't really talk about is that you're not going to know everything. I do consults all the time and people ask me questions and they say, is this a contraindication? I train on this. I've been training on all this for how many years now? And I'll still be like, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I need yeah. to go look that up. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> when you can email clinical and, and ask, you know, is this a contraindication? You could look it up yourself. Go to your physician in, in yeah. the office if you're not the physician. If you are the physician and you still don't know this is a contraindication because that happens a lot, um, email clinical and, and just double check. Yes. Yes. I think that that's, I think that's important to, to know that you don't have to have all the answers and that you don't have to fake it. You don't have to pretend like you, you know, something you can say, I'm going to get that, uh, that answer for you. Hold on. Or let me get back to you. Or, you know, let me reach out to, to my team. They are more secure knowing that you were actually asking and not just guessing. Um, so you don't always have to just know every everything. You can you can bring people in. I mean, even me and my my business partner will do that. You know, if if she's not a hundred percent sure about something, she's like, well, you know what? Let me ask let me ask Heather's opinion on this. And so I'll come in and vice versa. We both do that for each other, and it, it's just another pair of eyes. It's another mind on the situation, um, and people appreciate it. They don't. They don't get nervous about it. We, you know, they know you're smart. They know you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, they know that these questions that they've asked you are kind of above and beyond maybe what you know at that moment and you learn from it. So it's um, similar to like training when, when I would have new trainers that I was sending out into the world and I would tell them, if you get questions that you don't know, it's okay to say, I don't know, that's a great question. I'm not sure, let me find out. And I told them that there's not a single doctor that's going to give you pushback on that because they appreciate that you're checking and you're getting the right answer for them. And, and we're human. Funny. We're human, you know, and they know that. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we're not an encyclopedia. Um, so we got a question for you, Heather, um, too. Oh, she's an esthetician. Uh, she has a medical director, and then she's an esthetician. And then what products do you carry at your clinic? So we carry um, Glow, Glow Skin Beauty, um, and we also carry uh, Glymed. Those are our two product lines right now, and we are actually in the middle of um, talking to, I always mispronounce it, is it Antiage? Antiage? Oh, oh, good, Antiage. Antiage. I say it wrong every time. I love that. like name. write it down. I love okay. it. Antiage. And I cannot tell you how many good things I've heard about. Like it's constant about their training, about their products, about everything about them. There's so much science behind their products. Yeah. And I love that. Um, if you know me, you know, I love that stuff. Exactly. So, um, so I love that. Um, however, we, we have really, really great products and, uh, product lines, back bar, uh, chemical peels, and that's all glow and, um, and glymen. So one more question, Heather. It is, um, have you ever heard of Environ? I have. Yeah, I have. Uh, I, I believe I believe they're more of like an, a natural. Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be thinking of the wrong one. Oh, she said it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, Environ. You know what? I, yeah, I've, I've trained offices that carry Environ. It's a great line. There's so many great lines out there. So you know, many people and ask me all the time what I carry, and I'm like, 
please get out there yeah, and try reason. things yep. and come back and let me know because there are just so, 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 oh, and vi- yes, um, Vitamin A they're B. like serum based. Yeah, I think. Some of those products you may not be able to use post um, IPL. I wonder if they have something. Um, so, you, and you guys, oh, you can. Okay. So you guys, there's so many so many different lines out there. There's so many different price points too. I would take this time if you're not back at your office and busy yet and do so much research because there are so many. Whenever I'm at the trade shows, I always take a bit and step away from the Viora booth and just walk the floors where the skincare lines are, you know, like Abaji, SkinCeuticals, SkinMedica, blah, blah, blah. And I take my time and just talk to them for a while and and learn because they're constantly coming out with new products every year as well. So I would just do, do, do research, but I know Antiage is, is definitely. Look it up. Yeah. If you haven't heard of them before, uh, look them up. Um, I know that they, they'll sample products and I'm not sure if there's a cost associated, um, but they, have amazing products and they're so backed on science and uh our distributor in dubai this is how we we came to know Antiage is our distributor in dubai that carries viora they're they're an amazing distributorship they sell to the top 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 doctors in dubai um uh, a huge reputation a, a great reputation and that's their product line that they started carrying is Antiage and uh, then we got to know them and it was you know we, we definitely wanted to set up a partnership with them pandemic happened so we haven't been able to really partner with them uh, yet but I only hear good things and and their training too that they their their trainer is above and beyond so you really understand the products and how they work too so personally, I've been using their products now. Um, I, I just use them just to kind of feel them. And, and at first I wasn't, I wasn't like putting a lot of, putting a lot into them. I just was trying them and whatever. And I noticed when I ran out of my sample serum, I so missed it. Like I was like, oh, what am I going to do? I don't have my serum. And so in my mind, I'm like, this is amazing. This is what I want my clients to feel too. Yeah. So. I just personally as you know just a 35 year old <laughs> that's trying to take care of her skin I, I like the products a lot I noticed a big difference yeah and that's great I'll have to look into Environ as well just read about it yeah I mean and again there's so many skin pseudicals um skin medica um Obagi's whole line uh the What's Obaj, the new Obaji? Um, it's, um, oh, God, I just drew a blank. Uh, it's, um, <laughs> oh, um, Zio. 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 Amazing, <laughs> amazing. All, so many great products out there. Um, in different price points, too. Yeah. Zio is going to be a high. I mean, SkinCeuticals I'm, I'm absolutely in love with, but, again, the, the price point is quite high. All right. Well, everyone's saying thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us as always. And, and we hope this was helpful. Um, we have a couple more webinars coming up. I have mustaches. It's rough. <laughs> oh, you I got a hair removal treatment and now it's a little sparse. <laughs> That's awesome. That was perfect. Uh, thank you again. Have a wonderful weekend. You guys have a wonderful weekend. And just as a reminder, we have a couple webinars coming up um, in the next couple weeks pre and post care um, guidelines. I think that's going to be really a, a really, really good one. Uh, contraindications. I think that's going to be a really good one because we have so many questions on contraindications. Um, I think those are the two that we have planned coming up. And then we have additional ones coming up after that. But of course, we'll post them on uh, VioraOnlineAcademy.com. Thank you, Kara, for nice words about us. Oh my gosh, of course. You guys are so amazing. The, um, our Dubai uh, distributor is on. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah, they're so wonderful. They, they really, really are. Uh, they do it right. <laughs> the perfect company. Um, all right, you guys, we'll have a wonderful weekend and um, we will see you next week and stay safe.